Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another virtual painting session. Uh, just uh, disregard the previous random uh, posts that I, I made with the uh, uh, testing out a multi-camera live stream setup. It, it's just not going to work uh, with my current computer setup, so uh, everything should be back to normal, and we should be ready to go. So hello there, Marshall, and hey, Steven. How's everyone doing today? So uh, what we're gonna do is paint a portrait of a little kitten. Now, uh, I've had many suggestions and I definitely was looking at the suggestions for the volcano and the cityscape, uh, but it seems like a lot of people were asking for uh, the kitten and I felt kind of bad because I painted a canine last time, but we didn't paint a cat. Uh, and I like cats too, so let's go ahead and paint a cat. So let's get right into it. A little bit of turpentine is going to go onto my drawing brush and we're going to get started. I'm using traditional oil paints. Um, I'm not using the the water mixable, just traditional oil paints. I switched out my French umber with uh, raw umber uh, Winsor Newton just because I have a ton more of it than I do the French umber. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Hey Dondo, how's everyone doing today? I hope you're ready for another fun a la prima painting session. Um, so as I was saying, I definitely had some trouble earlier with my computer um, and it still seems to be running kind of hot. Uh, so it actually overheated uh, trying to run uh, two different cameras at once. So that was an issue, but hopefully it works now. I'm gonna go ahead with the outside shape, the silhouette of the kitten here. Um, so remember that I posted the photo reference um, on the community section on on uh, YouTube. So what you can do is just go check out the community section and the uh, photo reference will be posted there. This photo reference is borrowed from, uh, not Pixels, uh, Unsplash. Uh, it is a copyright free uh, source where you can download and use uh, the references without any worry of copyright problems. You can even sell your paintings and everything, so you don't have to worry about the copyright. So I have the outside shape of the cat mapped out. I'm going to put a very loose platform here. I want the cat a little bit further to the left, um, but you know, not much larger than this. This should work just about fine. Hey Pablo! Hello there from Wisconsin. I'm glad you're excited to be live from uh, Wisconsin. What is up? Hey Bruno, is there a reused board? Yeah, there is a painting underneath of this. Um, it is a portrait, an old portrait <laughs> that you can see. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is a portrait underneath of this, but don't worry. I went over the painting a long, long time ago with straight uh, alkyd, titanium white, and raw umber over this so it shouldn't harm the integrity of the paint film at all you can actually do this many times if you're using um if you're using a board like we're using here uh, so i don't know why i just put that in i don't see the cat's tail in the photo reference so we may just make it up um, so hey marshall you have two cats awesome my mother has two cats as well uh, both of which always want to kill me but they're still the sweetest creatures ever even though they want they want me dead <laughs> They're still the sweetest cre uh, creatures ever. So now we have the outside shape and I have established pretty much the working space of this painting. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just jump right into uh, some more of the uh, drawing specifics. And again, since this is a virtual painting session, feel free to ask me anything. Uh, I have tried, like I mentioned, uh, I'll continue to mention um, I did my best to try to set up multi-camera so you can see me and the setup, um, but it just didn't work. Um, and I'll build my own uh, streaming PC at some point in the future, but this is going to, this should do all right. Hey, Alma. Uh, thank you for the saludos de Mexico. Bienvenido a nuestro live stream. Um, so, this is a nice photo reference to use just because the light and shadow is so clear on this uh, cat. And the cat has a really nice uh, outward gesture. So definitely want to exploit some of these light and shadows in the umber drawing. 
you can see these very delicate little paws that just just make you want to pet the little kitten seems like a friendly little kitten at least we we think in theory now of course um, what I want out of this is a Alla Prima expressive fun style painting and I have some more news for you uh, for everyone uh, later on once everyone signs on to the, uh, the live stream um, a, a secret or should I say a, well, how do you say it again spoiler alert it's, it involves paintings that are finally for sale after so long <laughs> but I'll talk more about it uh, later on all right, what have I messed up? Uh, I don't think I messed anything up yet. Hey, Dondo, I'm glad the setup looks all right. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Bruno, my two daughters both have two cats each, plus a dog. I love cats, but unfortunately, I'm allergic to cats. You know what, Bruno? I was severely allergic to cats when I was um, uh, younger. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, back before they had the chickenpox uh, vaccine, of course, I was born before that, um, and I had a bad case of the chicken pox. But it also kind of affected me uh, in terms of my allergy to kittens. So when I was a baby, my mom had to, I was a toddler or something, my mom had to take the family kitten to a shelter, our family cat to the shelter. The cat was named Romeo um, because I was so allergic to and my mom, of course, cared for me so much that she made that difficult decision of uh, taking the uh, the pet to to be rehomed. Um, but in any case, I was very allergic to cats uh, when I was younger. And then when I lived in Philadelphia uh, to study at Studio Incominati, uh, the artist actually had, I think, four cats at the time. And I was just like, you know what? Art all the way, art all the way. So I just... I was like, if I'm going to get sick because I had asthma in the past, so um, I was like, I'm art all the way, right? I'm not going to let allergies stop me. And living with the four cats, um, my allergies were acting up, but they eventually subsided, which is crazy. Um, and now uh, my family has two cats. I can play with the cats. I can be around the cats. And um, other than the cats wanting to kill me, my allergies don't attack me anymore. I don't know the science behind it, but uh, I once was also allergic to cats. I might still be mildly allergic, but I don't have any symptoms from it anymore. All right, so now that we have the uh, light and shadow blocked in, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see if I missed anything. Uh, hey, Pablo, what medium are you using? Um, I'm not using any medium yet. I'm just thinning out the paint with distilled turpentine. That's my medium right there. Uh, pa Pablo, that is a Venetian medium. And no need to apologize. Feel free to ask me anything. Anything you'd like. Hey, Pablo, I painted the wolf along with you, uh, but recorded. Awesome. Yo uh, soy de Uruguay. Welcome from Uruguay. Awesome, awesome. Um, let's see here. Steven. Uh, my wife, Ren Rowena, has decided to stay up and watch you too. Well, shout out to your wife as well, Stephen. Thanks for watching along with the stream. Hopefully I don't disappoint too much. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and get an eraser brush and just sure up the sides a little bit. Um, you know, even though I'm going to be drawing this in the Alla Prima style, it still helps to have a kind of uh, tidy, tidied up umber drawing. I'm not going to do too much, too much for it. Just tidying up the lines. Let's see, what color? This is uh, raw umber, but as you notice, it's a little darker than before because I'm using uh, Winsor Newtons instead of Rublev. Just because I have a lot, I mean a ton of Winsor Newton raw umber, and I'm running out of my Rublev, so I'm just going to use uh, the uh, Winsor Newton. So just uh, Winsor Newton raw umber right now for this drawing. And it's not going to be that precise of a drawing, but it should be enough to get us going.
And of course, the ears aren't as pointy. Uh, that was just to get, get us going with the umber drawing. And I, I try to live by this philosophy. Um, you know, try to, you know, every day in life is like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. And another thing, I'm going to steal a quote from, from a movie, um, from Rocky. Um, I'm sure we all know the quote. Uh, and ain't, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. Something like that. Meaning today was really difficult for me in terms of my computer failing on me. And trust me, I fail at a lot of things. And, um, you know, I consider failures to be stepping stones to success. Every time you try something and it doesn't work and, you know, you feel that momentary despair, you have learned what doesn't work. So basically you get closer and closer to uh, your end result, which is to succeed at something. Uh, whatever it is that you're trying to succeed in, of course. And for me, it, it was definitely a problem with the computer earlier today. And then I found out that uh, my CPU can't handle uh, two cameras. And then I had to reset all of my settings. But I, I failed, but I left the situation learning something that I didn't know beforehand. So always remember that. Whatever life throws at you, Keep on trying, no matter what. Alrighty, let's see, what have I missed? Um, apologize, no in ballet. Uh, just, just raw umber, I think you were asking about this raw umber. Uh, hey, Carmen. Oh yeah, no problem, this is going to be fun, uh, painting a cat. Oh, I'm glad you've learned so much here. The palette here. Oh, the palette. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the palette. So I have flake white down here, which I'm not going to use that much. I have titanium white, which I'll primarily use for Ala Prima purposes. Uh, Gamboge Lake Extra. This is Old Holland. By the way, flake white is Williamsburg. Titanium is Winsor Newton. So Old Holland, yellow, uh, Gamboge, uh, Gamboge Lake Extra. Uh, this is Old Holland, Yellow Ochre Deep, Williamsburg, Cadmium Red, Vermilion. Uh, this is Old Holland, Alizarin Crimson, Lake Extra, uh, Raw Umber, uh, Winsor Newton, Ivory Black, Williamsburg, Ultramarine Blue, uh, Old Holland, Venetian Medium, Rublev. And I always talk about the abstract and how important the abstract is. So um, in particular right now, we are in the abstract stage, abstract shape of light and shadow. And this is really where you can design. Uh, you can do the most designing here. For instance, I can just put a little shape here uh, and maybe we can make the decision to, in the background, put some element here that's going to divide this little rectangle here from this rectangle. And in terms of composition, since this rectangle is larger than this rectangle, it may actually provide some kind of uh, interesting um, juxtaposition in terms of the shapes. So again, feel free to ask me anything while I'm painting. Please don't think that you're gonna distract me or anything. Uh, the more questions, the better. That shows me that you're, you're enjoying the stream that the stream is providing uh, a nice experience for you. And just let me know also how you like the streams. I think I, I'm not sure, but I think I have received some criticism already about streaming, uh, but I have to double check. I think someone out there doesn't like the, uh, the streaming, but it seems like the majority likes the streaming, so. Go ahead, let me know if you like these virtual painting sessions.
Hey, Jane. Uh, let's see. Is flake white the same as uh, lead white and is it toxic? Um, so it, it is, flake white is a lead white and it can be toxic if, uh, if we uh, misuse it. Um, so uh, the question is, is it toxic? Yes. Um, this is also toxic. This has cadmium. This is also toxic. It has lead in it as well. But as long as we don't run our fingers towards, uh, across it, uh, if you recall, um, the last, uh, virtual painting session I used water mixable oil paints and I was actually just kind of using my hand to blend and stuff um, I wouldn't do that with with lead white um, so so yes it is toxic but it's not dangerous as long as we don't eat it or run our hands through it uh, should be fine and of course we want to watch out with our pets because sometimes you know pets can chew at the paint the paints. I had this uh, this friend of mine who had a pit bull named Zeus, and the pit bull Zeus ate a bright tube of cadmium, or I think it was like naphthol red, and for like a week the pit bull was pooping out bright bright pink poops. It was the most hilarious thing ever, but um, luckily the dog was was okay, of course. I don't see a tail here, but I'm just going to make one up because I feel like the cat needs a tail. Got it? Good. Cat has a tail. Okay. So I, I think that that should be good. Uh, let's see. What have I missed? Uh, hey, Jane. Hello there from from England. Let me double check my messages if I missed anything. Hey Steven, I'm glad the stream looks okay in the in the UK. Again, hey Jane. Um, hey Marshall, I'm glad you love the streaming videos. Yeah, of course. Join into the conversation. Ask anything on your mind. Why am I using two different whites? Okay, uh, the flake white is something I'll probably use in the middle tone. It has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value, which gives you a thicker consistency of paint. Whereas titanium white raises the value really quickly, which is good when you need to hit really high values really quickly. So I just it's kind of like gears to a car, whereas the slow paced values, like the middle values, I'll use flake. The higher key values, which this is mostly high key, I'll use titanium white. So that's why I have two. You don't need them both. You can use one or the other. Hey, Jane. <laughs> I promise I won't eat it. So better to use gloves, maybe? Yeah, some people use gloves. But to be honest, as long as you don't have any cuts on your hands or anything, even if you get flake white on your hands, which I don't recommend, you'll be completely fine. You'll be OK. Don't worry. Uh, so let's see. Any, any more questions? Hey, Paul. Uh, hello there from Australia. I'm glad the streaming is doing okay. I'm getting a lot of okays. Is the stream not doing great? I hope that it's doing great. Um, hey Alexander, do you use your own? Uh, usually I do, but this is from Pexels. Uh, not Pexels, why do I keep saying Pexels? This is from Unsplash, which is a copyright free site that you can use. Basically any of these copyright free web websites, you are perfectly fine to use their um, images for paintings and even sell your images and create digital artwork based from their images as well. You can do that. What you cannot do from copyright free uh, websites is the obvious, which is just take the blank photo and then say it's yours, which is why I don't post the photo. I post the link to the photo. I don't even have the actual photo there. It's from the website. So hopefully that answers your question. What have I missed? What have I missed? How's everyone doing? Uh, hey, Carmen. I have a friend who wears uh, gloves whenever he paints so that he can use his fingers to smudge. Yep, that's good. Um, but also, I'm using this. Um, I use a scrubby scrub brush to smudge. So, um, yeah, you can just use gloves to smudge, but I like to use these brushes, scrubby scrub brushes. Uh, hey Jane, how do you get the soft look in a paint in painting? Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But in this stage, it's pretty much the application of paint. It's not that thin, uh, but it's still 
uh, thin enough, as you see here, that I can push it around, see there, uh, without getting too sharp of an edge. But we'll get more into the softness as we get into the, um, the half tones of the painting. Um, so, hey Marshall, okay, everything so far so good. I'm getting so far so good. Are, is the stream not in 720p? Because I set it up to standard 720p. So hopefully that's working. Hey Jane, so stream is good from Texas. Oh, we have two Janes. Okay, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Can you paint me? Well, well, we'll see, we'll see. Um, of course I would like to paint anything and everything that, um, that I can. But mostly the fun about this is the fact that we're all here and we can interact together. You know, and I can po point at the comments and it's just such a wonderful experience. So now, how about we start to tackle um, some of the colors on the painting. So I'm going to utilize the drawing brush and I'm going to start with the most obvious areas. So I'm going to use raw umber and I'm going to use a little bit of alizarin crimson lake extra and since this is ala prima i'm pretty much going to be moving fast uh, fast and furious which is what i call ala prima so going for the darkest darks right away is going to be my game plan the ear for some reason sticks out to me the most let's see here hey jane uh jane so we have two j's uh yeah spelt the same way awesome Hey Steven, picture quality looks okay. So it looks like we're getting a lot of okays and not great. So um, if there are any complaints with the picture quality, um, I can quickly check. Um, I can quickly check if my camera is not focused or anything. It seems to be looking all right in my um, in my uh, computer screen. So now I'm switching brushes and we're going to just go, go for glory. We're going to go for the half tones right away. No need to wait. So it's a little pinkish. See how if I don't want to raise the value that much, I'll use flake white. So I went automatically to the flake white. Hey Donda, oh the stream looks great from Northern California. Okay, good, good. I'm glad we've got a great, I'm <laughs> glad. And don't forget everyone, I have a, another announcement, um, another fun announcement to make once everyone is on the stream. So I have two brushes so far. We're about to get a third brush out. Yellow ochre. Apologize if you hear any people arguing in the background. There's some people arguing by me. Uh, so just in case you're hearing some random noises. But you know, such is life. Let's see here. Hey Hector, everything looks good in France and yes in 720p. Awesome. I'm glad that 720p works. Hey Alexander, can you recommend any books for portrait painting? Um, in terms of books, I almost always recommend, uh, I'll type his name out real quick, uh, John DeMartin. And um, he has a book out on drawing, but I think it really, the biggest problem with painting is always drawing, in my opinion, so, um, and plus John DeMartin was one of my favorite teachers, so there's his name, you can check out um, his published books. He taught me so much, so I studied with uh, this artist in uh, Philadelphia some time ago, so I definitely recommend, um, you know, the books that he publishes. Let's see here. What have I missed? What have I missed? Hey, Pelamic Pastry. Hello there. Yeah, the cat is cute. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to this, uh, get to the cat, uh, the specifics of the cat quickly. Switching brushes yet again. This is the most rapid I've ever switched brushes. 
uh, as I am trying to move really quickly. I have thinned out the paint quite a bit with the distilled turpentine, as you're seeing, it's starting to move around. And this is going to be to fill in something for the background. I want the background to be pretty dark in this area. So we're going to use a little bit of Cairo Scuro. And when you're working a la prima, you really want to work all of the shapes uh, at once to get the fastest results. And this will thin, uh, sorry, this will fade and sink into the, um, the surface at some point because I have thinned it out quite a bit with distilled turpentine. So again, we are using turpentine and we are using lead-based uh, material, so we're living on the wild side for sure. And we're doing ala prima, so we're definitely, definitely on, uh, we're in the fast lane when it comes to oil painting. Alrighty. Hey, um, Andre, Andre Gagno. Excited for your first oil painting on your birthday. Awesome. Happy birthday and happy painting. And I hope you will enjoy your stay here in the virtual painting session. Yeah, that virtual painting session. Hey, Gata, what's up? Gata actually means uh, kitty in, in Spanish. So I really enjoy your name. I'm actually reading from my YouTube. So uh, I'm a little behind on the comments. So let's see. Ilse Marie. Hey, you probably am currently on a remote game farm from Africa. Glad I found a spot with Wi-Fi. Well, I'm glad that you found a spot with Wi-Fi too. Almost midnight over there. Wow. And you think you just heard a hippopotamus. Ooh, gotta be, gotta be careful out there. Be safe, okay? I think I now have caught up. So, hey, inside, out. Uh, is there any reason, f uh, blogs, is there any reason for it? I'm a beginner, sorry, this is, uh, what? Uh, let me see here. I think uh, there might be a typo, typo, typo. Uh, Pelamic pastry. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're going to get to the fur and ala prima really quickly. Hey, Marshall. Uh, let's see here. I have enough brushes to paint an entire picture without using the same one twice. Wow, now that's good. I don't have that many brushes, but I have some brushes. The white cat meow. Alrighty, let's get to some of these these values. As, as I'm saying, um, I like to use titanium white for these purposes, as you're seeing here, to really get the brightness, the full intensity of the brightness. And I'm using titanium white and yellow ochre. Full intensity of the brightness. And we're gonna get to the specifics in a little while, but I like to work general to specific. But I'm sticking with the ear because it is one of the areas that calls my attention the quickest, the most quickly. Uh, I should also mention uh, that my website is currently down. So just updates um, using a little bit more flake white. So just uh, just know that my website will be down for some time as I have to adjust the artwork in there. I have, I have omitted the link in this stream. So I have a middle tone, a dark, dark brush and a light, light brush. I may confuse them from time to time, but that's just how I'm working. That's just how I'm working. Alrighty, what have I missed? Do you use a different brush for each color, uh, Jane? So what I do, oh, thank you, uh, Andre Gagno. Thank you for your wonderful comment. Do I, I use different brushes for different values. Light, this one is dark. Middle, so light, middle, dark, and I also change brushes depending on hues, uh, if I have to switch from complementary uh, hues. Uh, hey, hey Miyoka, uh, can you do a short video on supplies you need to start oil painting? 
Uh, I got really intimidated as people say the colors are toxic and the chemicals you have to use are a hassle. Um, so I do have a video on materials. I think it's the first one on my YouTube channel, but I can certainly talk about it here uh, because it's not that difficult of a concept to talk about uh, my Yuko. So we can talk about that. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna keep that comment in mind. Now let's see, Redina blogs inside out. It, it's so much easier to blend in oils. Are you much more, uh, or are much more forgiving if you make a mistake and can wipe them out? Yep, definitely. Um, oil painting is more forgiving. Hey, Gata. Um, yes, White Cat Feminine, the kitty you painted today is cute. Oh, okay, thank you. We're definitely gonna try and give this kitten some justice today. Um, Let's see, how do you know which colors? Have I caught up? I have caught up, okay. How do you know which colors do you have to pick for a certain part of the reference and which ones uh, you have to mix? So typically, um, when it comes to color, I'm more uh, focused on the value. So for instance, the first color that comes to mind is a type of yellowish brown. So I went ahead and put in uh, raw umber and yellow ochre just because it's a yellowish brown that I can edit as you're seeing here uh, with different values to get the type of effect that I want. Um, hey Pillar McPastry, um, well that's okay. Sometimes I just use a few brushes as well. It depends. If I'm painting a small segment, I'll use a few brushes. And um, all right, so I had a question about if I want to get started with oil painting, uh, what materials can I use and what about the toxicity? So that was a wonderful question. I'm going to get to that right now. So for instance, I'm going to read out my palette to you as I'm painting. I have titanium white, I have flake white, I have gamboge like extra, I have um, my yellow ochre, cadmium red vermilion, raw umber, and I have um, alizarin crimson lake extra ivory black, ultramarine blue. Basically what you want is the primary colors in such a way that you can work with them. And please don't worry about the toxicity of the oil paints. It's not the oil paints that are toxic. It is the solvents that can be toxic. So what I'm using is probably the most toxic solvent you can possibly use. So it's distilled turpentine. If you don't have windows, then whatever you do, uh, don't use distilled turpentine. If you're living in a, in a, if you're working in a place with no windows, I would suggest using, uh, I have it around me somewhere, but Gamsol. Uh, so to get started with it, titanium white is a good color to get. Yellow ochre is a good color to get. You want a bright red, so cadmium red light, I would suggest ivory black and a umber. So that gives you the primaries except for a blue. You can opt for ultramarine blue as it is one of the cheaper blues. So basically titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, raw umber or burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and just get started with that. Uh, these are non-expensive brushes. Uh, these are brushes that I get 40% off from Michaels one, one at a time. Uh, and when you paint, try to paint on panels as panels are smooth. You can paint over them several times without having to worry and um, just experiment. And as a solvent, get Gamsol. As a medium, get Liquin or Neomegulp. And get yourself a metal container, a metal trash can if you're concerned about your uh, paint your paints spontaneously combusting. What I do is I get all of the rags and put them in a metal container, metal containers that I purchased inexpensively from a local hardware store, and that's it. You can start oil painting. It's that simple. And of course, if you want to take your learning with me further, please check out my online classes on Patreon, where I go more in depth into the topics that you're asking me about. So let's see, I must have missed a lot of comments. So, uh, hey Jane, uh, this is very helpful. Thank you, Pelamic Pastry. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, I may have missed some comments, but I'm trying to get, trying to read quickly. Uh, hey Marshall, there's also different shapes to uh, brushes 
My favorite is the dagger brush. I like round brushes, to be honest. Okay, so Pelham McPastry. Okay, so he's just defining what he means about um, painting with a few brushes. Okay, I think we're good. And if I missed anyone's comments, please feel free to ask once again. Uh, I mean, I tend to be a slow reader, but I'll I'll be checking up. Uh, what primer do you prefer, acrylic gesso or traditional oily primer? Traditional oil primer or um, so to be honest, I haven't tried the traditional uh, oil primer. I use uh, Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso. I've been using it for years. I highly recommend it. Um, it's in the uh, materials lists in the in the video. So if you want to scroll to the materials, it's Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso. You really can't go wrong with that gesso. And it dries overnight, whereas the oil uh, the oil-based primers, though I'm sure they are uh, really awesome to use, take uh, about two weeks to dry. Hey, Steven. I like long, flat brushes. Awesome. Oh, all right. So there we go. Um, any second now. Any second now. There we go. So Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso. Here is the link. So that is the gesso that I highly recommend to use. And I put about, uh, when I'm preparing a surface, suppose it's just raw wood, I put about four to seven coats of acrylic gesso. Thank you about the, thank you with the question about uh, getting started with oil painting and what to buy for oil painting. That was a very good question. And please, any technical questions, uh, feel free to ask me. I can talk about them as I'm painting. Don't worry. I got you. Feel free to ask me anything. Hello. Pilamic pastry like uh, filberts, awesome. Uh, let's see here, Miyuka. Thanks for answering. I will try getting started with oils. I have uh, the most free time I would ever get due to this quarantine situation. Well, that there you go. Positive. I like your comment. I like your positivity. See, you're bringing positivity into the equation. You're bringing positivity into the stream. I really enjoy that. Hey Jane, may I ask what support are you using? Yeah, sure. Um, this is a wooden panel that I uh, had a previous oil painting on that I just sewed, not just sewed, sorry, I just oil painted over top of. So there was a previous painting under this that I painted over. So if anything, this, um, this surface is even more uh, I guess it's more absorbent of oil paint than um, if it were just primed, um, you know, just a couple days ago or a week ago. And we're going for values and shapes. And I'm going for big shapes that I can sculpt. And uh, that sculpting aspect is what is intrinsic to oil painting in particular. Since it's so slow drying, meaning uh, it'll dry in a matter of um, days versus minutes. Let's see here. Uh, can you do another sergeant study one day? I can, um, but the sergeant would have to be definitely in traditional. But the problem is traditionals have to be split up into separate streams, as we saw what happened with Velasquez. Uh, I jumped the gun with that one, and I and I definitely, uh, in a skater term, ate it. <laughs> 
meaning I failed miserably. But um, yeah, we can we can definitely do that. Alrighty, what have I missed? What have I missed? Hey, got the thank you. This one I don't use, and next time I will try. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, no problem, Jane. Um, do you work with charcoal? Yes, I do. Sometimes uh, I will draw with charcoal. I prefer to use the Neutron charcoal primarily. But sometimes I'll use a medium vine charcoal. Medium or soft vine charcoal. Now, for a little while, it's going to look like Halloween Kitty um, without the eyes, but that's just uh, that's just how it is. That's how we're going to start it. Hey, Stephen. I'm glad you don't mind separate streams. Hey, Jane. Oh, thanks. The kitty is a, it's, it's, it's a little possessed right now. We, we have a little bit of... Um, you know, a possession going on because we don't have the specifics of the eyes or the nose just yet, but we're getting there. Hey, Stephen, I'm glad you don't mind separate streams. Um, it's it's interesting now because the YouTube algorithm, I've been studying it on my dashboard. I found that they, I found even the, the calculus that they use in the program, um, which is not that difficult. They use a simple uh, differential geometry transform that it looks like. Not differential, uh, ordinary differential equations. Uh, but in any case, I digress. I found that based on the YouTube algorithm, the preference is with blank surfaces. But we can definitely do some, some longer ones. Oh, by the way, this is the perfect time to spring this on everyone. Hey, David Lawrence from the UK. Hey, is everyone ready for something uh, pretty cool? So you know how I talk about Patreon and my online classes and how I guide my students through um, through uh, projects? I'm actually going to show you the progress on Project 3 on my Patreon. Let's see, what have I missed? Uh, how do you balance construction and observation? I feel like when I go with a constructive approach, it often lacks likeness and... When I go, uh, what, blah, 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 here we go. When I go with the more observational approach, it often lacks form. Well, it it all depends on that linear foundation, that's understanding of uh, how to block in with simple shapes. And then once you understand that, uh, taking that into working with shapes of color and pushing those shapes of color until you get the effect of form. Oh, awesome! I'm glad you like the stream because it makes you want to draw. Definitely, drawing is awesome. Hey, Teresa, I'm glad you love kittens. Um, let's see here. Are there any books, tips, or uh, tips for getting the process done, for getting it right? Uh, hey, Inside Out. So, um, okay, let's talk about this. And um, Hey, uh, JK, yes, I do work with charcoal. I like to use Neutrom. So let, let's, let me show you something now. Um, Hopefully this works out. Remember how I'm telling you I have online classes? I want to show you a glimpse into Project 3. Um, remember, my online classes are $10 a month. Uh, hey, Matt K, my, my family is from Peru. So the name Upari, I think, originates from Peru. But everyone, check this out. Here's Project 3. So here is Project 3, not finished just yet. But that was filmed this morning as we are continuing to develop uh, continuing to develop in a classical oil painting style of Girl with the Pearl Earring. That is project number three. So that's an example of the uh, the technique that I use for my online classes, for my online students. So remember, it's just $10 a month. But in any case, I'll show you once again. Uh, we do do uh, classical painting. And again, it's not finished. It's in the middle stages now, Girl with the Pearl Earring. So again, this was streamed just this morning for my online classes. The live stream tier can watch it as the lesson is uploaded. So that's $20 a month. But $10 a month gets you access to every single pre-recorded lesson and virtual classroom. Um, so in any case, I thought I would show you. And I'll, I'll show that image from time to time. But I have another surprise in store for you too.
soon we'll we'll progress from Halloween kitty to cute and fuzzy kitty. But not just yet. Not yet. We're going to stick with Halloween kitty look for a little while. Hey, Pillar McPastry. Oh, I'm glad that you, you like the pearl earring. I'll tell you what, with that one, um, it's quite difficult to... Uh, to do without a, a linear uh, drawing of some sort. So what I have done for my online students is I create uh, drawing templates for them uh, in multiple stages. Um, but I can't really show it here just yet uh, because I haven't actually put it into my uh, live streaming software. But if you want to see the uh, image of Project 3 in progress, feel free to ask and I can show it again. But I'll, I'll show it from time to time. Just so you get a glimpse of what we do in the online classes. Alright, so it says reconnection successful. Hey Jane. How do I layer lighter colors, uh, for instance, the Halloween kitty eyes over darker areas? So with Ala Prima, it's actually easier to layer over top of a darker color. With Classical, it's the opposite. It's actually easier to layer over top of lighter. Uh, change brushes again. Time to change brushes. I'm sorry that we lost connection for a little while. I got the, it sometimes it's difficult to see big blocks and avoid looking into details that are disturbing in this step. Uh, so do you have any kind of exercise that can help? Uh, hey Hector, I'm glad that it works again. I apologize for that. Um, that's not a good sign that I lost connection like that, but um, you know, it should always reconnect on its own. Now, uh, in terms of seeing the simple shapes, the big shapes, um, that's a really good question. What I suggest is um, to do very simple progressive linear drawings. And I do actually have um, lessons that involve that very uh, topic for my online students, which involve transfer drawings because it teaches you how to see in sequence instead of seeing all of this information at once. Now this is Alla Prima painting. This is the Fast and Furious. Uh, okay, so this is Fast and Furious way of painting. I highly suggest having a strong foundation in classical painting before doing Alla Prima painting, which is what I'm doing here. And since I have many, many years of painting, uh, I, I can freely paint like this because I have the experience with classical, but this is the type of confidence that is built through, um, you know, the right kind of teaching. Hey, Stephen, uh, I'm sorry that we lost connection, but we're, we're back. Uh, yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. Yep, we're all back. Hey, Jane, so how do you uh, paint thicker to layer? No, don't worry. Keep asking questions. I, I appreciate all the questions as it, it adds to the experience of the stream. Um, so with Alla Prima, I paint relatively thick, uh, much thicker than uh, classical, and I work much, much more loose. So for instance, um, I mean, if you check out what I'm painting right now, I'm putting in a kind of grayish tone, taking bits and pieces of what's in the background. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm thinning out the paint with the distilled turpentine and the medium for the background. And here, where the lights are, I'm painting much thicker. So with Alla Prima, definitely going in with a loaded brush. Loaded brush technique actually helps you also to obtain a more uh, free-flowing uh, color in Alla Prima. So 
So a little, uh, for instance, a little bit of turpentine and Venetian medium. Hey Jane, and do you teach classical oil painting? Yes, um, actually the majority or all of my classes at this point, again, the uh, unfinished, this one, this unfinished uh, project that is still ongoing is being created in the classical style, meaning it had a full monochromatic grisaille, um, actually two layers of full monochromatic grisaille. I teach classical because it's much easier to transition from classical to alla prima if you so choose to paint an alla prima like this than it is to go from alla prima to classical. So I'm filling in a little bit of the bottom here just because I don't want this to have an empty spot. So here, see how I'm just kind of scrubby scrub, letting the brush strokes show through. This is a fun alla prima type of trick. So I'm very quick to fill the background there. Uh, let's see, why don't you hear music with the paint? Um, I do listen to music while I'm painting, but I, I can't really do that now because I'll get a copyright problem from YouTube if I play any music while I'm painting. But usually I'll have Netflix on or I, I will have some music playing while I'm painting. So I, I do, just not while I'm streaming. So I don't get a copyright problem. Hey, uh, let's see. Leonardo, do you do you like watercolor and is it something you use? Um, actually, I, I don't think I can answer that because I haven't actually tried watercolor yet. I've used acrylic, but not watercolor. All right, let's get back to the kitty. Let's see here. So I think we're all caught up with questions, but please feel free to ask me anything while I'm painting. Alrighty. Hey Jane. I see. I think. Uh, I thank you. This might not be the place to ask, but my first time on uh, live. Oh well. Shout out to you again, everyone that's new to the live stream. Definitely comment down so I can give you a uh, a shout out for being new to the live stream. I hope that you're enjoying the live stream. Uh, how long do you have to wait for drying between layers in the classical method? Um, so I usually with classical the classical. Uh, technique with traditional oil paints I wait meaning these I wait about three days um, and I don't paint as thick so if you don't paint as thick you should have a touch dry painting overnight um, but sometimes it may take a little longer so that's why I give it three days now if you're using water mixable oil paints um, I'd say about two weeks uh, just because those take much much longer to dry and it's not a problem. I have students in my classes that do use the water mixable oil paints. And some, uh, some have actually found ways to expedite the drawing process with the water mixable. So again, please uh, feel free to ask me anything.
Now we're going to go into the eyes of the kitty. Let's see here. Who is the artist affected by his painting style? Okay, I'm trying to... Is this a riddle? It sounds like a riddle. I think everyone's affected by their own painting style. Okay, so while... Uh, so Jane, so while I wasn't aware that water mixables... Uh, that was water mixables. That's what I have tried, though I do actually have regular oil paints. So yeah, the uh, water mixables, you know, they're good paints to use. They just take a long time to dry. That's the biggest con, really. But depending on how frequently you paint. Uh, let's see. Uh, the la so now the, um, the live stream comes up as private? I think... Um, so someone just sent me an email and this is not on private. I think that was for one of my test streams. You know what? YouTube is is wonderful, but it's crazy. Uh, so when you test, so if you, anyone's wondering, live streamers have to test their streams using private settings. And I didn't even connect my streaming software and YouTube connected me and changed my status to public. When I was testing my stream earlier today, YouTube is nuts when it comes to that. Um, but it just is the way it is. So, uh, Naldia, if you're watching, I'm, I'm sorry that the video is coming up as private. Does anyone have any problems with this video coming up as private? Hey, Pallavi. Uh, hey, Pari. How are you? Can you please suggest how to how to paint black hairs, uh, base tone, and high? Uh, so to paint dark hair, I usually, with any kind of hair, whether it's on the model or um, on, a, on a furry animal, I think about it in terms of planes and light and shadow, but we can do some dark hair uh, paintings in a little bit. Hey, Charlie, what are the disadvantages of water mixable oils and what brand of, uh, of them do you think is best? I used Artisan uh, once and thought they were they had worse covering power somehow, but I could imagine. No, you weren't imagining, uh, Charlie. Water mixable from uh, Winston Newton, the Artisan brand, is not very good. Um, and uh, I have deleted some of my old videos where I used it for that reason, even though it cost me some money to delete them. But uh, I suggest Cobra Talons. Does somebody want to write that out for me? Cobra Talons uh, for water mixable oil paints. Thank you, Jane. Uh, so there it is. Cobra Talons. Yep, there you go. This is the brand I recommend for water mixable oil paints. Hey, Steven, in the community section, the live stream is set private, but if you uh, go to the video tab, you can see... What? I didn't, I didn't put the video in the community section. That's crazy. Thanks, Dondo. Yep, Cobra Talons. I have no clue what that's about. And I can't even alter my community section from my phone. I'm going to check that out as well. What in the world? Oh, I see what you're seeing. Yeah, so whoever's... Uh, when you see this, just ignore it. This is just YouTube being weird. So click on the read more. Let's see there. Well, I know it's kind of gl glitching. Click on the link that says unsplash. And it'll take you to the photo reference. See that? Uh, so that's how you can paint with me if you go to the community section. I have no clue what that video was. I posted the link to 
the photo reference. Hey Cynthia, what's up? I don't think so. slow drying is a problem. Well, it, it's not. It, it really isn't. It just depends on the frequency um, that, that you're painting. But if you have multiple paintings going on at once, it really isn't a, a problem. And I highly recommend Cobra. In fact, the last time I streamed, which was a couple days ago, I used Cobra. So I highly recommend Cobra Talons if you have allergies to traditional oil paint solvents and materials. Um, so, let's see. Hey, Cynthia, quite the opposite. Acrylics dry so fast it gives me anxiety. Well, that's not good. Um, yep, uh, definitely uh, Cobra. There's nothing wrong with Cobra except for the slow drying. Hey, uh, Leah. Um, pros and cons to water mixable oil paint. Awesome question. All right. Pro, you don't have to use solvent. Pro. We're talking about Cobra, okay, just Cobra. Pro, you don't have to use solvents. Pro, easily clean, you can easily clean off your brushes. Pro, the color variety is, is rich and very prismatic. Pro, it is a highly uh, reputable brand, Cobra Talons I'm talking about. Uh, con, it takes a very long time to dry. Con, Water mixable oil paints have not been around as long as traditional oil paints, therefore uh, the uh, archivalness of them is not as well understood as traditionals. Um, con. They can be a little oily. The paint tubes can be a little bit oily compared to, say, Old Holland. But that's about it. I mean, in terms of the cons, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And if you have allergies or sensitivities or you don't want to use traditional oil paints um, for any reason, then there's nothing wrong with Cobra. You can definitely go with Cobra. Hey, Matt K., how long does it take to dry? About two weeks, sometimes three weeks for Cobra. Um, if you paint not as thick, it may take longer if you paint thick. But in some cases, depending on the conditions, if you keep your paintings in warm places, then they can dry uh, faster. Let's see here. Hey, Angela. Uh, what do you think about the difference between medium size and mini size, uh, medium size canvases and mini size canvases? I mean, difficulties to draw and paint. Well, definitely the smaller the surface, the larger the margin of room for error is with the painting. And sometimes you can't really see an error because the painting is so small. So I typically will go around 9 by 12 inches, uh, 8 by 10 inches at the smallest, 8 by 10, uh, even though I'm painting a miniature right now. Um, and uh, uh, between 8 by 10 inches and uh, 36 by 48 inches, uh, if somebody wants to convert those to centimeters for me. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Leah, thanks. No, uh, no, the cons are not bad. I might try Cobra. I use traditional oil paint currently and cleaning them. Uh, currently and cleaning them uh, is a pain. Hey, Leah. Yeah, I dry, um, I dry my paintings in the, in the trunk of my car. Oh, okay. I, I knew someone that uh, did that also, uh, but they would put their paintings in the dashboard. So um, another con that I want to talk about with water mixable oil paints, and let me say that this is pure conjecture, um, purely speaking from conjecture. Now, one of the problems with 
oil paintings cracking over time, in particular old master paintings, is rabbit skin glue. The problem uh, is that the rabbit skin glue takes in moisture. Now, um, I reiterate this, this is pure conjecture, uh, meaning it's not based off of facts, it's based off of theory. I have a theory that water mixable oil paints, because they've been modified to take in, are thin with water, I conjecture that in the future, I don't know, maybe in a hundred years or so, water molecules from the moisture could potentially penetrate paint film if it's not varnished in water mixable, if it's not varnished well. That is my theory with water mixable oil paints. And again, it's not a con, it just means, um, you know, if you varnish your water mixable oil painting with traditional varnish, um, then you're, you're fine. If you use Damar or Gemvar, you should be fine. Um, so it's just a, it's just a uh, conjecture. Call it Upari's uh, silly conjecture. Hey, uh, Glenn, uh, Bennett, um, you can sign up for my classes. Actually, Donda, if you don't mind putting the link um, after this comment, uh, you can sign up at uh, patreon.com slash Upari artist, but uh, Dondo should uh, post a, a link over here. Um, but if you really, if you want to find it quickly, please just type patreon.com slash Upari artist. Remember, the online classes are only $10 a month. Gets you access to all of the lessons along with all of the uh, virtual classrooms. I'm going to just type it actually for you. So please uh, ask me questions, anyone, about the uh, online classes. So here is the, and I'll get to this comment soon. Here is the um, the link. Just type patreon.com slash artist and look for the online class slash mentorship tier. And you will have access to the online classes. There you go. Dondo is right there. So there is the link uh, right there. Thank you for that. Um, so Mervat. Uh, hi, uh, I hate modern portrait. I love drawing like Rembrandt and Sargent. Is this wrong? Of course not. We're all entitled to our own preferences. Although I noticed that people like to draw uh, like the way of modern drawing in portrait as if it were picture uh, or printer. Um, so, I mean, if you really like the classical, you know, like a la Rembrandt and stuff, uh, definitely check out the online classes because we stick with the classical and uh, we start with classical as the foundation of painting, along with, of course, drawing. Drawing is one of the most important, if not the most important aspect to painting. Now we're making this Halloween kitty more and more realistic uh, every second that passes by. Hey, uh, Leonardo, do you require some type of knowledge for your classes? Excellent question. Um, so, uh, Leonardo, no, no. You can enter the classes as complete beginners, and a lot of my students have entered as complete beginners, really, and are just learning so quickly. It's very wonderful to see. And that is because it's, it's based on the fundamental principles of um, shape, value, color, structure, and everything is step by step um, and uh, the videos are are more in depth meaning one painting um, will have up to eight or more different uh, hour-long lessons sometimes more uh, so it's a very involved uh, they're very involved classes so you can enter as a as a complete beginner or as an advanced painter any level So let's see here, what did I miss? Yep, no problem, Clint. Another nice thing about the Patreon is that you can contact me really fast. So uh, Patreon has a messenger. Uh, it doesn't let you send images. So students send images of their artwork to me. They have the option to send me images of their projects uh, weekly by Saturday nights. Um, 
But one thing is the messenger because they can send me messages and I'm updated almost instantly by the Patreon messenger. So I'm always checking that messenger. So it's the quickest way to contact me. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Mike. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, so now I actually want to introduce, now that um, I, not, it doesn't seem like everyone's here, but now that uh, the, the stream has been going on for some time, I'm excited to announce that my Patreon, not my Patreon, my uh, Etsy is back. Uh, I finally have posted something new and I'm going to start posting actually. Um, so in the future, paintings created here will be posted onto Etsy, um, originals and art prints. Right now I have one original up for sale. It is the only painting of mine currently available for sale. So here is the listing on Etsy. So as you can see, it is on Etsy now. If you type up uh, Upari Artist and Etsy, you can also see the price there. Um, it is an original artwork that has been signed. It has also been varnished, so it is prepared to be sold. Each one of the paintings that I sell comes with a certificate of authenticity. Um, so each painting that I, that I sell uh, has that certificate of authenticity, so you know exactly uh, who painted it, when it was painted, and um, it's signed, and so you can verify the signatures as well. But it's the only painting currently that I'm selling. Uh, I will update more, but that is the only one. But at least we're back in selling paintings. And the sales are first come, first serve basis. Mike, have you or do you do landscapes? I haven't seen any, so I'm assuming not. I do. I do uh, landscapes. I have one Ala Prima landscape video, I think, on here. Um, but we can definitely do more. So anyone interested in landscape, please uh, let me know. Uh, the interest for a cat was overwhelming, so we definitely are doing the cat painting, but uh, again, I had some suggestions for volcanoes and cityscapes and all kinds of awesome stuff. So, you know, perhaps we can do a landscape. Have you asked, you shall receive. Hey Jane. Oh, thank you. And so if anyone is if anyone wants to see the painting that is currently for sale, please feel free to ask me. And yes, I'll be making art prints. I have a uh actually a up upgraded photo reference. Not photo reference, what am I saying? I have a uh more up to date image of it uh to create art prints. Though I can't really share the um super large image but I will make art prints of it soon. Alrighty, what's, let's see here. Okay, I think this comment is a repeat. So um, there's nothing wrong with the way uh, wanting to paint classical portraits like Rembrandt and Sargent and not wanting to paint modern looking ones. And of course, there's nothing wrong with not wanting to paint photorealistic. It seems like we're on the same terms, to be honest, because I really enjoy classical painting, but I also enjoy Alla Prima painting. I enjoy Alla Prima painting and uh, creating, combining it with video, which is what we're doing today. Um, so no, there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to do classical. And again, that's, that's what I teach. 
uh, I, I teach with uh, the Alep, not the Alepirma, I teach with the classical approach. By the time we're done, this kitty is going to sound like it's purring. We can do this. Let's see here. Hey, Mike. Landscapes are my forte, so I'd love to see your take on them. Of course. Definitely. We'll do it. What kind of landscapes are are you interested in seeing me paint in particular? I know, Stephen, you suggested a volcano erupting. Um, so ask away what kind of landscapes. We'll, we'll definitely utilize um, uh, Unsplash. Or Pexels, one of those two. Oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll make this a very uh, realistic and friendly kitty. And I tell you what, Ala Prima is forgiving to a certain extent, but not as forgiving as classical. But as a trade off, classical painting will take about nine times as long, but will produce the most realistic results. Alrighty, let's see. Hey Tanya, how you party? Thank you so much for doing a cat painting tutorial. Uh, have a, a ginger Tom and uh, definitely be painting his portrait now. Awesome! Definitely love to see your paintings. Hey Matt K, oh, I'm glad it's already purring. Why did the old masters use beeswax in their medium? Ex um, dot 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 extend the paints or for some reason. I know that certain old masters used a wax, uh, type of waxy resins uh, to expedite their drying process. Uh, this is what I heard from um, uh, art conservationist lectures that they would use that to expedite drying. So I'm assuming that that was to expedite drying and also perhaps to prevent uh, cracking when moving large paintings. We know that we know that Rembrandt actually put in some some type of uh, wax resins. Of course, feel free to correct me um, if anything art in terms of art history or anything I said was wrong. Let's see here. Uh, hey, Angela. Okay, let's see. Bernie, an Icelandic landscape. Okay. Let's see. I think there's a question up there that I may have missed. Hey, David Lawrence. Um, okay, I think I answered your question about the beeswax. Uh, Angela, this is 11, 14 inches. Hey, Hector. Uh, and, uh, I don't know this uh, centimeters. If somebody wants to convert 11, 14 inches into centimeters for me. Uh, hey, Hector, it may not be erupting volcano tonight, but kittens can still act like ones in, in an apartment. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. Hey, Jane, can you do the classical method with water mixables? Um, you can. It just, um, you know, it takes longer to dry between layers, but it, it can be done. Hey, Power, Courage, and Wisdom. A landscape of Acoma Sky in New Mexico would be awesome. Okay, good suggestions, good suggestions. Hey, Mike Barker. I love anything to do with nature. I paint Alla Prima at present. I'm currently experimenting with photorealistic landscape using uh, blocking with acrylic and uh, oil overpainting. Awesome. Sounds fun. Hey, Brick. I'm late to the party. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, plenty, plenty more to go. Hey, Charlie. What is your favorite Alla Prima painting medium for water mixable oils? And have you tried Artisan Thinner? It is better than water for uh, water for a thin drawing and underpainting question mark 
Uh, so Charlie, this is a really good question. Um, for Aloe Prima water mixable, like we did uh, last time, I actually prefer the paint itself uh, because if you'll notice with Cobra, if you open the tube, it'll actually leak a little bit of oil. Um, and that pretty much just shows you that the paint is already pretty oily. So uh, for Aloe Prima with water mixable, and co with Cobra in particular, of course, um, I actually don't use uh, medium. I just use the medium that's already in the paint. Now, when it comes to traditional oil paints like these, uh, I do use this right here, uh, Venetian medium, to thin out the paint whenever I need to thin it out. All right, kitties. Now let's now let's give you some. Let's give the kitty a torso. Let's do it. So the chest has to be a little bit cooler, as it is a different uh, local color. Now we're going to go up with a darker plane over here as we start to transition into the dark light for the shadow. And now we're going to quickly change value into a lighter tone, lighter tonality, as we start to move towards the chest region of the little kitty. Moving our way up, we're going to switch brushes as we now enter a passage that's lighter because it's facing the light even more. I'm applying a very loose and liberal brush stroke to get that kind of, uh, I don't know, like brushy brushy a la prima look. So now we're just covering here and it's going to be a little bit more orange along the sides. So a little bit of these two colors together, a little bit of flake white. And now we're going to have that kind of orangey color and quickly moving across to try to get the effect of light. As we start to move our way down, we'll add a little bit more light over here. Now it goes into half tone over here. We've got to switch brushes into more of the half tones towards here. Gets a little bit warmer towards the dark light. And then it gets lighter once again for the paw. So now let us return to the comments, see if I missed anything. Angela, sky, trees, and mountain. Awesome. Mike, will you get the fur effect as in the reference? I've never painted animals, so now I'm interested. Uh, we'll get a furry effect. I'm not sure if it will be exactly, of course, like the photo reference as I try to, of course, uh, make it a little more painterly. But, but yeah, we'll do some uh, wet on wet uh, painting techniques to get the uh, the fur. Now let's go to the questions that I've missed before. Hey Leonardo, sorry to ask, but are the online classes pre-recorded videos or is it everything live? So uh, Leonardo, the classes are, each lesson uh, consists of a pre-recorded video, but the pre-recorded videos are currently being filmed live, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Monday morning Wednesday morning and Saturday morning. So for instance, this morning I filmed another lesson for, not that one, for <laughs> this one. So this morning I filmed another lesson for that one. Um, once the live lesson, uh, once the live is complete, the pre-recorded video is then available for all uh, of my online students. That being said, I have to make sure that it's published after this chat because that was filmed today. Alrighty, so Brooke, um, you probably, just an idea, why don't you stream these painting sessions in other platforms as well, like Twitch, question mark, so you can get subscribers and donations and all that. Yes, I have been thinking about that. For anyone wondering, I'm thinking of creating a Twitch, uh, but specifically with drawing, uh, in particular charcoal drawing. Um, so I am thinking of uh, creating a Twitch. Hey, David Dowden, greetings from... New Orleans. Awesome. I think we're caught up now. Again, feel free to ask me anything. But yes, I am considering a Twitch for sketches. For sketches. <laughs> I get it. So for the fur, I like to put little 
um, you know, brush strokes in the direction of the fur just to get it going. Hey Eric, oh thank you. So how do I select my uh, painting references? Very, very good question. Thank you for the question. I look for very clear light and shadow when I select photo references, especially from uh, outside sources, uh, copyright free sources that is. If it has very clear light and shadow and it's um, easy to understand the structure, meaning the photograph isn't overly ex overexposed, then I'll use it. Of course, it also depends on the subject matter. You know, certain things I wouldn't be able to paint just because I would get demonetized. How many here would be interested in a Twitch Twitch um, charcoal drawings. Of course, I would keep doing these, um, but I do want to start the Twitch because everyone's suggesting it. Alrighty, what have I missed? What Hey, uh, or I think I missed, yeah, I missed a comment. Uh, I'll get to it. Hey, Hector, I would totally be hyped for charcoal drawing streaming. Yes, yes, and triple yes. Definitely. Um, uh, if you'd be interested in the charcoal drawing channel uh, that I can create in Twitch, then definitely I'll do it. Hey, May, uh, very nice painting. What app do you use? in uh, taking this video. I use OBS streaming software. Uh, all right, what am I missing? Hey, Brooke, I remember you once asked for followers to send their pets photos so you could choose good ones to paint them. Will you ever do that again? Um, I can, I mean, I can if you wanna send me images of, uh, of your pets, but obviously it, it depends on what I'm filming on that day because everyone's suggesting landscapes, so I'm pretty much gonna be painting uh, as everyone suggests. So everyone's painting landscapes and so, uh, I had someone actually send me images of landscapes, so it, it really just depends on the light and shadow quality and, and everything. Uh, hey, uh, let's see, David Dowden. I think this is a this is okay. This comment's fine. Uh, hey, Mike. Okay, if you'd be interested in that, yeah, we can do that definitely. Alrighty, if everyone wants, I can do that. Start that Twitch right away. Hey, Angela. Is there a live stream tier to watch and talk uh, live on Patreon? Um, the live stream tier is for the live lessons. So for instance, uh, each lesson that we have on Patreon, Angela, um, as you are one of my online students, you have access to every single class, Angela. It's just that when each class is filmed, the live stream tier, the $20 a month tier, can watch it while it's being created and ask questions while the lesson is being created. But at the $10 tier, you have access to every single lesson and all of the, um, uh, the um, virtual classroom videos. Hey, Chris. So I uh, bought some charcoal and two pads of newsprint. Awesome. So yeah, we can definitely do charcoal. Leonardo, you like charcoal? All right. We're going to stock up on some Neutron charcoal and some paper and get to work soon. Alrighty, so Brooke, I'd be interested in sort of in uh, these sort of streams, but sadly, I'm really into drawing. I am too, so we'll get there. Donda, you think that would be cool? All right, all right. Now I've caught up to all of the comments, so I would also be interested in charcoal drawing. David Down, and alrighty, we've got a lot of interest in this, so yeah, we can do that. Okay, Brooke, you're not interested. Okay, uh, that's all right. Um, Mike, do I draw in graphite? I do, but only for transfers. Um, but if I want to draw painterly, I'll use charcoal. 
just because it's easier to to uh, to move and to uh, maneuver. Hey Jane, I have to go, but thank you for this. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed uh, your stay here with us. Alrighty, I think I missed the ending of that one. Um, uh, let's see. Will this video also be available later on your channel to watch? Yes, certainly, Jane. Certainly. We still have a long way to go, but yes, the, uh, all of the footage from here will be available once it's uploaded to the YouTube server. And YouTube does it automatically. Hey, Merlin J. Walters. Just watched the Finishing the Wolf today. I'm glad uh, you watched it. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm glad you thought it was wonderful. Oh, I'm glad that you like the, the pearl earring. It's still in progress for my online students. It's project number three. Hey, Mike, you draw portraits in graphite. That's good. I do. If I want to do a highly, you know, super finish, then I'll use graphite. But usually I like more painterly um, drawing myself. Hey, Leonardo, are the references for charcoal different from uh, painting ones? No, not, not necessarily. I could easily have drawn this in, in charcoal using mass. And again, if you're interested in that, I can create a Twitch channel specifically for that. But we'll keep this one, of course. So don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving YouTube. Now, of course, this paw needs to move closer, so I'm going to just move it. And make the paw a little bigger. Okay. Hi, Susanna S. So, yeah. Once I create the Twitch for the charcoal drawing, I have to get a, the materials for it, of course. But once I create the Twitch for that, then I'll let you know. Hey, Scott, welcome to the live stream. Um, so I've had a lot of questions about the fur, and I'm purposefully painting the first pass on the fur really, really uh, thick without any medium. And I'm going to go over this with uh, thinner paint. Remember that thicker paint tends to stick onto thinner paint as the wonderful Bob Ross uh, has been quoted saying. So um, we're going to exploit the uh, painterly aspects of uh, Alla Prima when we get to the fur. But I want to cover all of these shapes and get the planes. So I want a very solid foundation for the fur to rest on. And I may be making the uh, fur a little too light, so I'm going to have to adjust that when I get to it. Hey, Angela. Uh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Pablo. Uh, uh, Glorix, uh, did you try some to animate something? Uh, I've tried to anim I've tried to do like a horse running for a school project in high school, but not ever since. Hey, Mike, I'm glad that you're excited to see charcoal. Yeah, we'll definitely do charcoal. Um, let's see. Hey Angela, oh thanks Donda. Uh, hey Angela, uh, besides charcoal, can we use pastel watercolor to draw before oil painting? Uh, you can. I actually uh, like to use uh, charcoal, no, pastel pencils to draw. So you can use it. Hey, uh, Mike, yep, uh, the front right leg. Mm hmm. I see that. Yep, uh, I've got the brush actually ready for that. Um, so I am trying to adjust it. Thanks for following along with me. This one definitely. And I had way too much out here for the for the cat, so we're gonna have to uh, off with the tail <laughs> for now, and then I'll bring it back. Don't worry, we'll give the kitty back its tail. Uh. 
All right. Kitty wants its tail. Um, I'm giving it a tail because I feel like compositionally it needs a tail. Let's see here. Hey, uh, Lin yes, uh, Leonardo, I'm drawing the tail from imagination. I'm imagining where the light most facing planes will be. We're going to give the kitty a fluffy tail. Because the kitty really needs a tail. Alrighty, so Angela, what have I missed? I, let's see. Sometimes it is difficult to paint, uh, and I don't paint the whiskers because I'm afraid of getting it wrong. Um, well, the whiskers, you know, you can, if you're afraid of getting the whiskers wrong, you can definitely wait till the painting dries and then paint it wet on dry. That way you have the most control over the paint. We're giving the kitty a fluffy little tail. Hey, Mike. Oh, um, uh, yeah, that was the other thing that threw me. Yeah, I was definitely, I was trying to get to it. I'm moving a little slow, but thank you for pointing that out. Hey, Pablo. Oh, I'm glad you liked how I used the red in the middle of the left ear. Yep, it. Um, it's definitely transparent. Uh, so it, it definitely lets in some of the light from the back uh, reflect. So some half tones for the tail. Kitty wants its tail. We're going to give it a tail. Kitty wants patterns on the tail, so we're going to give Kitty patterns on the tail. New problem. With Ala Prima, we can do anything uh, really quickly. Just don't expect it to be as realistic as classical. I just don't want the tail to end up looking like a croissant. So I have to put in different planes for it. Let's see here. Uh, hey, Marty, I have a question. Do you varnish your oil paintings? Uh, I stopped doing that because I varnished one painting too soon and it smudged. Uh, actually, I would suggest Gamvar. Uh, I actually made a video on it uh, for my uh, patrons. Actually, I have to upload that video after the stream is over. But um, I suggest Gamvar over Damar these days because uh, you can use it while the paint is still uh, touch dry. And it shouldn't smudge it as long as the painting is touch dry. Let's see. Uh, hey, Scott, plus if you do the whiskers wet on dry and don't like them, you can just wipe them off. Yep, uh, definitely. Hey, Mike, those eyes are uh, hypnotic. Wonderful job. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, hey, Mike, yeah, what Kitty wants, Kitty gets. Kitty definitely wants a tail, so Kitty's going to get a tail. A big tail, too, a big fluffy tail. I better paint in the, the base of the uh, floor while I'm doing that. So I'm going to put in just a dark for this section once I get to it and let this be that umber, that nice little transparent umber color because I think about those painterly effects. As I said, I do want to sell these paintings. So I have to consider every aspect, every corner. Can't cut corners here. Hee <laughs> hee, literally. Even the tail. Ah, painting's gonna fall. Let's 
all the way down to the bottom. And of course we'll add the furry texture and stuff to it afterwards. But what we need is that structure. So when you're painting something from imagination, you have to be very, very observant of the direction of the light. So, um, for instance, the direction of the light coming this way would suggest that there would be a shadow here. So we're going to put that in. Alrighty, hey Steven. Is Gamvar varnish, uh, is Gamvar like touch-up varnish? Gamvar is a, a, a relatively new but well-studied varnish that you can use while a painting is touch dry. And for those of us that want to sell paintings um, uh, sooner rather than waiting the six months, you can use Gamvar. It's fully removable, but it also uh, protects the paintings really well. Again, I used to always use the traditional one, uh, Demar, but you know, waiting six months is kind of a drag, so it's nice to have that ability that uh, Gamvar gives us. All right, so now let's go in with that really dark dark that I was talking about, ivory black. And since this is relatively warm, we're going to go cool. A little bit of medium and go to town. So we're going to have two different brushes out here. All right, I think I missed. I'm going to go scroll up and read this one. Hey Pablo, the muzzle is definitely too long and sharp, but I think you can fix it by moving the nose and uh, darkening more the surface of the bottom. Yep, we'll, we'll get to it, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, we will get to the muzzle. Hey Marty, I think uh, your answer, or thank you for your answer. I will try a different varnish. Um, yep, you used the Mar varnish. Definitely try Gamvar by uh, uh, Gamblin. Kitty wants a name. I like Kitty. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty. Uh, no, Siva is better. Okay. Yep, no problem. We'll get to the we'll get to the uh, specifics of the cat soon. But I have to fill in the rest of the composition. So we're gonna put in something warm here as an in between, as we want to go in between the layers. This is just gonna help help me have control over the edges. See that? Now I can easily uh, modulate these edges. Yep, Kitty's going to need a name. Yep, don't worry, Pavel, we'll get to the, the muzzle. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and fill in some of the dark here. Ultramarine blue, ivory black, raw umber. Turpentine and go. I want a brushy, brushy effect. Cover up to about here. I'm going to leave this for my pinky. Now I'm going to get a larger brush. Uh, hey, uh, Nora, uh, how did you learn painting? I studied uh, Studio in Kaminati for a year in Philadelphia. I studied several years with an artist named Paulden Hamilton. So um, those are my main, um, you know, uh, sources of uh, education in my past in terms of art. I also have a, a math degree. I was a math tutor um, as well. Let's just cover this. I was going to leave a spot for my pinky, but I don't mind getting... Uh, burnt umber, ivory black, and ultramarine blue on my pinky. Of course, I can also use the mall stick. And after this, I'll get to the muzzle 
for the cat. We'll adjust it. No problem. And the square will just help with composition. Squares are usually pretty good to use for composition. Now let's get to the muzzle. Yep, no problem, uh, Pablo. We will fix that. Alrighty, let's see here. What have I missed? Uh, you purry for the name. Awesome. Hey, Steven. I was asking whether it was equivalent to Winsor & Newton touch-up varnish, which may be used once painting is touch dry, which is removable up to 99 years after. It could be, but I have not researched much into that uh, made by Winsor & Newton, but it sounds very closely related, Stephen. Alrighty, yeah, no, no problem. Let's get it. Let's get it done. <laughs> let's get to the, um, and let's get to this question. Hey, David Dowden, the conser uh, conservator I deal with said if you need to varnish a painting earlier than six months. Uh, to use Krylon uh, Gallery Series Quick Dry for oil paints with spray varnish. Interesting. Interesting. I've heard a lot of not so good stuff about Krylon. Um, I would be very interested to have a conversation with the um, with the uh, art conservationist because I used Krylon before, and then my teachers would tell me don't use Krylon. So I didn't. So for the muzzle, we're just moving the nose up and then we're going to adjust everything accordingly. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I wouldn't have seen that, so thank you. Let's see. Hey, Cupcakes Angel 365. Uh, what made you change your... Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to the YouTube page. Um, what made you change your career path? Uh, were you paint of act, painting actively during your degree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did uh, math because it was the only thing I could really stomach. I really did enjoy math. I still do. Um, but painting was always my thing. I did painting before I went to school for math. But, yeah, painting was always in the back of my mind. Hey, Marty. I enjoyed your large painting. Uh, oh, The Explorer. Awesome, Marty. I'm glad you watched The Explorer. It's like eight feet away from me. Oh, thank you. I'm the Bob Ross of portraits. Well, that comment means so much to me. Thank you so much. Hey, Mike, you ruined two paintings with Krylon. See, I've heard a lot of bad things about Krylon. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the conditions the painting's in, in terms of the room. Hey, Steven, you like the background dark light effect? Uh, I'm glad that it works with the composition. Yeah, I, I mean, I like this. I, I have to cover up there, but I, I like having this. Uh, contrast. So let's let's get to the um, the muzzle. I'm sure somebody is sitting in the uh, uh, yelling at the screen right now. Fix the muzzle. Fix the muzzle. We'll do it. Don't worry. We'll fix the muzzle. So what you got to do when you got to move something? Uh, I call these projections. When you have to project something, pick a spot, move it, and then adjust everything according to it. So when first thing is to identify the problem, and then you plan out how you're going to fix the problem, then you go about resolving the problem and making sure that everything around the problematic, blah, 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 everything around the problematic area is addressed accordingly. So for instance, this is gonna raise. Kitty said, my muzzle's too long. Well, Kitty, you're going to get a shorter muzzle. K 
Kitty gets what Kitty wants. Let's see here. Alrighty, so Dondo, what about uh, Grumbacher Final Varnish? Um, I don't know, actually. I haven't tried it, uh, Dondo. I stand by Damar for certain, and uh, I really like um, Gamvar as I just started using it recently. Angela. Um, but you're in our online classes. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the online classes. And great work with Project 3, Angela. I really like how you're progressing in uh, Project 3. Yep, yeah, Pablo, don't worry. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, you need to make the, that part of the head more roundy. Muzzle is almost inside the circle. Okay, we'll get there. Oh, no worries, Don, though. We're definitely starting to uh, get it closer. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. I've definitely got lead white on my fingers now. And again, don't worry if it's on your fingers as long as you wash your hands. I'm sure we're all used to washing our hands at this point. You don't need any um, any Lysol or anything on your hands. So no need to worry about a little lead white on the pinky. It's okay. We're going to be okay. Alrighty, what have I missed? So I missed the comment here, so I'm going to scroll up there. Alrighty, David Downen, I took her advice to expedite the painting for a client. It worked well. For a true varnish, she recommended Winsor Newton's matte varnish. It has UV protection, easily removed, uh, and has beeswax. Okay, awesome. Hey, Pavla, the line below the nose should lean a little to the right. Okay. We'll get there, no worries, Pablo. Alrighty, so, uh, alright. No worry, Pablo, don't worry. You're good, buddy. Thank you for pointing everything out. No need to worry. Hey, Nora. Uh, how long does it take me to finish a painting for Ala Prima? About uh, a three and a half hours or less, uh, Ala Prima. Unless it's a portrait. If it's a human portrait, then um, it'll take days. Alrighty. Try to make a portrait of Adam's family. Oh, yeah. Adam's family for Halloween. Yeah. If I can get a copyright for your a reference. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mervat. What's up? When we mixed all that color in our palette, how could we control the warm and cool colors, transparent and opaque colors? It's too hard to do it. Don't worry, buddy. Here, notice how it's warm. Cool. Green is separated from red. Blue is separated from the yellow. The kind of muted colors are grouped together. The darker colors are grouped together. All right, Steven. I keep baby wipes in the studio. They work great in getting oil paint from one's hands. Well, I need to have those around now too. Especially with Ala Prima. I'm usually covered in, in lead white, but it's all good. I, I accept the risks. I just make sure not to, you know, eat while I'm painting. Let, let, let me stand back and check the muzzle. Uh, hey, Charlie, I have tried flake white replacements. Gamblin's is my favorite so far. It's the closest to um, true lead white. All right, so what's up with the nose? Let me see here. So this is just a caliper that I got from a hardware store back when I used to work on motorcycles. Anyone that works on motorcycles, you probably know what I'm talking about. You know that little bolt that you have to adjust for your chain? 
That's what I used this for. And now I use it for painting. And just to gauge distances, really. Oh yeah, so definitely I still need to move this. Probably up to about there. I'm going to need to move the mouse too. It's all good. The eye is actually a little bigger on the cat. We can do that. Give the cat more of a cute factor. Kitty wants a bigger eye. Kitty gets a bigger eye. Of course, we're going to have to adjust the other one accordingly. Kitty says, you par, you can't draw, man. What's going on? That's what Kitty says. You par, says, I got this. I got this. You gotta have faith, you gotta be confident. Or else the kitty will slip out of hand. Let's see, hey Marty. Uh, Yep, Don, the kitty gets what kitty wants. Uh, do you watch some other YouTube artists, uh, oil painters? Um, so, uh, on YouTube, I um, unless I'm listening to music, I like to watch pet YouTubers. Uh, I don't actually watch other art channels. No offense to any other art channels. Uh, for those of you that have met me or know me, um, I... I have a really keen interest in animals and um, pets. So I watch a lot of uh, pet YouTube channels. My favorite YouTube channel at the moment um, uh, is called uh, Chris Hardwick. Um, he's a ball python breeder. Uh, he uploads uh, new videos every day. Uh, so currently that's the YouTube channel I watch a lot. And of course, I like to watch Tarantula YouTube channel. So if you want to look up uh, uh, Tarantula Dan, he's pretty cool. So Kitty wanted a bigger eye, and we gave Kitty a bigger eye. Ah, that looks much more Kitty-like, I guess, that eye. And now it's kind of relating better with the nose. See, I'm grouping the darker values together and the lighter ones together. Hey, Charlie, if you ever lack motivation to paint, what do you do to get inspiration and motivation back? You know, one thing I like to do other than looking at, um, uh, you know, like master paintings online, uh, I will, if I lack motivation, I'll actually spend time preparing canvases or panels or organizing the studio. That's usually my go-to if I need motivation. Hey, Arcadian Art. Um, I'll get to the comment above I just missed. Uh, been a while. I'll watch this later. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, well, thanks for joining for a little while, Arcadian Art. I'll see you on the next stream. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Steven. I'm glad that my uh, channel is your favorite channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Hey, Hector, um, for your online course, is there a specific panel size to have or is 11 by uh, 1117? I don't have a specific panel size, to be honest, Hector. Um, 
Anything larger than 8 by 10 inches, really, you can use. And remember, everyone, as um, someone asked before, again, thank you for all the questions about the classes and just questions in general. Um, you can enter in as a complete beginner. A lot of my students enter in as complete beginners, and they learn so quickly. I'm really proud of my students. Kitty wants more realistic paws, so Kitty gets more realistic paws. You say you want a highlight on your paw? Okay, Kitty, you're going to get a highlight for the paw. Make it more realistic. Hey, Noel. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for watching from all the way in Belgium. Hey, Alexander, what's the longest you painted in one sitting? Oh, that's a good question. Very good question. In one sitting, one day. Uh, I think this goes back to my, like, very early days back in 2011, 2010-ish. Uh, I remember I painted straight through one entire night and then wiped out the painting that I was painting. Uh, but yes, I, I did paint all night once. Never did it again. I recommend to paint no more than four hours on, on a single painting. Just because we can lose objectivity really quickly. Oh yeah, I forgot the kitty's, uh, kitty's face. Cute little face. Um, all right. Half tones, half tones. I better cover the top portion before I forget. All right, hey, hey Marty, uh, thank you. Yes, I painted along with the, uh, oh, thanks for painting along with my videos. You did the Rembrandt and the uh, Cecilia Beale portrait, awesome. You know, another thing about my um, online classes is that um, I also give my students the opportunity for extracurricular paintings. Extracurricular paintings for my online students involve sending me an image of a painting that they did painting along with me with any of my pre-recorded videos on YouTube. Um, so as an online student, you can also send me images each week of the uh, uh, paintings that you did painting along with me, whether it be the kitty or all the way back um, from the daily Upari days. So you actually have the potential to send me three images a week, uh, but one of them is a monthly uh, mentorship to your critique, which means monthly original artwork. The other would be the two weekly ones, which are the uh, class projects and the extracurriculars that I just talked about. Alrighty, uh, so Charlie, uh, who is your favorite historical painter? Mm, painter of historical events or just painter in history? Painters in history, uh, how about this? Excellent crowd question. Excellent crowd question. I'm going to start with my answer.
I'm drawing a blank. So my question is, uh, list your five favorite artists of the past. Alrighty, I got the first comment. So my favorite five artists of the past, if we're talking about historical meaning from the past, Nelson Shanks, who unfortunately passed away in 2015, very recent top favorite painter right now. Nelson Shanks, John William Waterhouse, Sergeant Bouguereau, and Rembrandt. Those are my top five. Now please type your top five favorite painters of all time. And I, I wrote them in... Uh, not in any specific order, but Nelson Shanks is my favorite. And while you're doing that, we're going to uh, put some more structure in for the kitty. In particular, adjusting the muzzle even more. Now, I usually ask for just one of your favorite painters, so it may take some time to type them out. So please type. I want to see all 68 of us here typing their five favorite painters of all time. Now 66. I guess two didn't like my uh, question, but all 66 of us typing their... Okay, now we're back to 68. So now all 68 of us, please type your favorite five painters. I've memorized some of your responses at this point. So I know, Stephen, you're going to write Bouguereau in there. Um, but I wonder which other uh, painters you like as well. Alrighty, thank you for your comment, uh, J.K. Shell. Uh, let's see here. So, Vermeer Caravaggio. Rembrandt, Sergeant Titian, solid list of painters. Wonderful. As you can tell with Project 3, uh, we certainly like Vermeer as well. Let's see here. Angela, Caravaggio, Picasso, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, I'm thinking, and uh, Porthani. Got to look this one up from Brazil. Awesome. Hey, Charlie Sargent, John uh, Everett Millet. Ah, okay, hold on. Give me a second. Um, so Charlie Sargent, John uh, Millet, uh, Frederick Edwin Church, uh, Constable Bouguereau. Awesome. Stephen coming in with, of course, uh, Bouguereau. Oh, you like Van Gogh as well. Uh, Lowry. Okay, I got to look this one up. Velasquez Caravaggio. Solid. David Dowden coming in with Aldean Redon. Okay, we need four more, David. But, of course, uh, I got to look this name up. Hey, Roxanne. That reminds me of this song, Roxanne. Awesome. I like your username. Uh, Homer, definitely. Hey, Hector Plasm, Caravaggio, Goya, Bachlin. Okay, I got to look this one up. Rembrandt, Jeffrey Jones, but it changes depending on the mood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of these I actually have to look up.
And I know the feeling. My my top fives always change. But Nelson's been my favorite for a while now. Alrighty, let's see here. I think I missed one up here, so I'm gonna go back up. Okay, give me a second. Hey Zach, Soroya is my all-time favorite, awesome, but I like Sergeant Velasquez, Tischer, and San Santos, awesome. Hey Marshall, my favorite artist is Da Vinci, followed by Rembrandt, uh, Michelangelo, Sargent, and Waterhouse, awesome, awesome selection. All right, David Downen coming in with the other four. Van Gogh, Artemisia Janileski, solid choice. Caravaggio, I can see how you can group those together. Awesome. Hey, Steven, there's a great BBC documentary about uh, Lowry. A lot of fakes out there. Okay, i got to look that up. Hey, Dondo coming in with Velasquez, Monet, Picasso, Sargent, and Peter Paul Rubens. Awesome. Great variety there, too. Zach uh, Monet too. Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Uh, Monet was one of my favorites for a long, long time. He still is one of my favorites. Let's see. Hey, Zach. Okay, so Monet. Hey, Mar Marty. Your top five. Rembrandt, Da Vinci, uh, Holbein, The Younger, Botticelli, and Fragonard. I got to look up Fragonard, but I, I know of the others. In particular, Botticelli. Awesome. I know I mispronounced it, but awesome. All right, so now that I think we've got the mouth, the muzzle figured out somewhat... Now we'll get into some of the furry aspects. So Susanna Millais, I gotta look this one up. Velasquez, Sergeant, Rembrandt, Monet, or Manet, also Manet is pretty cool too. Leonardo, I really like Van Gogh and Renoir, awesome. More modern selection, awesome. And of course, Roxanne, yeah, Mary Cassett, awesome works of hers in the National Gallery in DC. Hey Steven, do you guys get the BBC program, Faker Fortune in the States? Uh, does someone want to answer that one for me? Uh, anyone here in the U.S.? I don't know, actually. I don't watch a lot of uh, uh, TV. Just a lot of Netflix. Uh, we're currently watching The Magicians, my uh, fiancé and I, on Netflix. Hey, David Downins. Yep, okay, so we do have it. Awesome. Now I gotta see it. I don't think I've seen Fake or Fortune. Everyone's like 
Do you live under a rock? Kind of. I just spent a lot of time painting. Let's see here. So, Steven, it's about uh, proving, say, if Van Gogh is genuine or fake, like the scientific approach to it. Is it really that difficult? Couldn't they do, a, like, a mass spectrometry? Spectrometry or whatever, however it's pronounced. Couldn't they just use a mass spec to see how old the particle sizes are? Unless the painting was created exactly at the same time and around the same conditions. But I'm no expert in that. Hey Marty, so you also watch uh, Faker Fortune. Awesome. So looks like something I have to to look up as well. Kitty wants some fur. Who was asking me earlier about fur? Because we're now gonna get into fur. With planes, of course. Kitty wants fur, kitty gets fur. That's why I make uh, certificates of authenticity with my signature. Of course, uh, someone could possibly fake that too, but I'm thinking with mass spectrometers these days, I think it should be pretty simple to figure out uh, so if something's original or not. Or if you just use x-rays. A lot of times they do that for Rembrandt's. Wait a minute, I'm getting it wrong. Mass spectrometers only describe the, I think, the elements inside of particles, so never mind. Never mind. I'm confusing it with uh, x-rays, I think, or carbon dating. Alrighty, let's see. What comments have I missed? Alright, oh, Scott Turnbull. They prefer FTIR for pigment identification uh, because it's non-destructive. Mass spec would destroy a sample. That's I was confusing it. Yeah, it's been a long time since science class. <laughs> it's been a long time. Thank you for correcting me there. Somebody had to correct me. I needed to be corrected. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's on YouTube. Faker Fortune. Okay, I'll check that out. Yep, 
Kitty gets what Kitty wants. Kitty wants fur. Kitty gets fur. Hey, Steven. Oh, other artists at the time would pass off uh, artworks. At, oh, really? They must be really good at reproducing uh, master studies. Kind of remarkable. Hey, Mervot. Already, thank you for your answer. We've got Rembrandt, Sargent, Leonardo, Picasso, Van Gogh. Awesome, awesome variety there. We've got one page saying kitty. Uh, hello there with the kitty. Uh, Charlie Lane, what's up? Do you have any recommendations for charcoal paper for Neatrum? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I'm going to write it down right now. Very specific, actually. Um, I think I miss. Yep, I misspelled the uh, metons part. But here it is. Here it is. Wait for it. Wait for it. Come on. Internet. There we go. Canson Meteon Cream or Oyster. That's my favorite paper to use for charcoal. And um, since everyone wants me to do the Twitch, I'll I'll create a Twitch soon, um, uh, specifically for charcoal drawings, uh, sketches, um, and. That's most likely the paper that I will use. Canson uh, Meteon Paper Pastel, and I did misspell it. But if you type that in, it should autocorrect. Thank you for the question, by the way. And please, anyone ask me any questions, art related or anything. All of you are what makes these streams awesome. It's just amazing that we can communicate from across the world, from different time zones too, in a matter of seconds. It's wonderful. Kitty wants a darker form shadow. Kitty gets a darker form shadow. Yep, and thanks for everyone that's leaving a like. We're at 96. Um, is there four, four of us out there that hasn't left a like yet? Anyone want to Anyone want to give us the extra four likes to, to get 100? If you don't mind. Kitty says we want four more likes. Let's get four more likes for Kitty. Hey Carla, the painting hits me right in the feels. Oh wow, I have uh, wanted to paint my cat, but she. Oh well, dang. I'm sorry, Carla. My condolences. Well, if as any photo reference is is a photo reference that you can use, Carla, and I'm glad that the video is is helping you. Um, my condolences. Um, recently, about two years ago, we lost CJ, our Doberman of 11 years. Um, he had some medical complications. So um, I definitely, um, and my condolences to you. I'm sending out my, my respects, my respects, my whole respect virtu uh, virtually here to you, directly to you. I'm sending you a virtual hug. And thank you for the, the extra four likes. Kitty just earned an extra four likes. We are not at 100 likes. 
Oh, thanks, Teresa, for hitting the like button and Marty. Thanks, everyone, for leaving a like. Kitty is very thankful. Now, be careful now. If you leave a dislike, Kitty's going to scratch me. So if you see me next time with a bunch of scratches on my hand, you know what happened. Kitty was upset. So someone was asking me about fur earlier. Um, so what I'm going to do is paint in the fur using the brush strokes in the direction of the fur, wet on wet, with a little more medium. So remember, thin paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. You want the brush strokes for fur to be scattered. You don't want them to be uniform because in nature, rarely do you find something perfectly uniform. So very lightly and not too repetitive. See how these markings are not very repetitive? Oh, wow, we have 105 likes. Thank you. And again, my, my condolences, Carla, and sent, I sent you my, uh, my virtual hugs from all the way here in Beltsville, Maryland. Hey, Horse Help, uh, hello, and thank you uh, for these live sessions, for this live session. Of course, we'll definitely do many more uh, from NWPA. Awesome. So uh, anyone watching, if this is your first time, please comment. Leave a comment so we can give you a warm welcome to our virtual painting session. And even if you've uh, been here several times, just feel free to say hi. Brush strokes in the direction of the fur. And I'm trying not to make the fur overly repetitive. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Dondo. So again, Dondo, I will be sending you, um, if you want to send me your email. Actually, I don't know if I have your email. Do I? I do, because you send me images through the, for the virtual classroom. So Dondo, I will send you some uh, high resolution images of uh, artworks as a reward. Oh, this is so awesome. We can point at the, uh, wow, it, it skipped already. But thank you so much for the super chat, Nando. It helps so much. Hi, Steven. Hey, Leonardo da Vinci has entered the chat room. Hello from Argentina. Awesome. Thanks for watching from Argentina. No worries. I understand you, buddy. Just ask me anything you want to ask. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like um, how I paint. This is the Alla Prima technique, the fast and furious way of painting. Um, this is built from knowledge of classical painting, which is what I teach in my online classes. Hey, Aaron, what are your uh, your five favorites? Are Sargent, Matisse, Rom Romer, Bearden? I gotta look that one up. Uh, Manet, Ty, David, and Jerome. Awesome. Hey, Marlene. Oh, it's a question to Marty. Uh, hey, Horse Help. Yeah, you can definitely watch this later. Um, this will be uploaded to YouTube as a public video, um, pre-recorded video um, once the stream is complete. Uh, YouTube does that automatically for me. Kitty said, my edge for my leg is a little too sharp. 
So Kitty gets a softer edge. Wait, you can rewind live streams? Oh, wow. Okay, I, I didn't know that. The things I learned. Awesome, I didn't know. So apparently you can pause this and rewind it live. Okay, interesting. But then I'm wondering, then it's not real time. Hmm. My mind has been blown too much technology for me. Now we need these really soft edges. Painting wet on wet. Remember, when you layer wet onto wet paint, you want to use thinner paint over top of the thicker paint, which is why this whole foundation was painted dark. I mean, dark, really? Really? Uh, the whole foundation was painted without any uh, medium, and now we're layering onto it with medium. Okay, I think I've missed the comment up there. All right, so... So Carla, that's good news. I'll definitely watch this again. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know we could rewind it, but we can. Hey Scott. Okay, so if you pause and play it back, it, it plays from where you paused. Okay. Hey Scott, no no worries. Oh, I didn't know. The things I the things I learned. Alrighty, so let's give some more form to the kitty's paws. Would anyone like to suggest a uh, painting for next time? We've had a, we had a lot for uh, cats because the last one we painted was a wolf or a dog that looked like a wolf. We had um, some suggestions for landscapes. Last time we had volcanoes erupting uh, as a suggestion. So last time the suggestions involved volcanoes erupting with uh, rainy cityscapes, water, uh, water in close proximity, um, still life, uh, broken still life on the floor, all kinds of things. So what are your suggestions for the next painting? Let's see here. What did I miss? Marshall Watkins has sent us, I think, a chicken. I think that's a chicken. It's kind of hard for me to see the emoji. A self-portrait? Oh, you don't want to see me. Maybe for Halloween, if you're interested. Maybe for Halloween. But of course, um, I actually did complete a recent self-portrait. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the image on here. I, I did a self-portrait recently with uh, Zorro, my ball python. Friendliest creature on earth. Not even kidding. A dog? A doggo? Leonardo da Vinci could be. Uh, we painted a wolf looking dog last time. So maybe a short haired doggy. Hey Marty, I would like to see some food still life paintings. Okay, yeah, we can definitely do some more still life paintings. Definitely. Hey Teresa, that would be okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so here, let's see. Hey, Teresa, that would be okay. I don't think you've done one for YouTube. Um, are we talking about a dog or... Oh, a landscape. I think we're talking about landscape. 
Uh, do you use sketchbooks or things like that to sketch? I do, uh, but I usually, um, I don't do very artsy sketches. I usually do uh, like schematic sketches and uh, with a lot of writing on it. Uh, hey, Carla, architecture? Okay, we can do architecture. Um, but I would definitely need, um, I would need to research and probably do some studies before that. As we know, architecture is very heavily reliant on um, drawing tools. But certainly. Teresa says the self-portrait. Hector says... A figure painting clothes, I think, here. You know, Hector, even if I show a clavicle of the model, YouTube immediately tries to flag it. So it's a little difficult. But I hear you. If I paint someone in a winter coat, I might be able to get away with it on YouTube. Kitty says, I have fluffy hair. Fluffy hair you shall receive. Which, by the way, um, anyone that's wondering, these paintings, the virtual painting session paintings, they will all be for sale on the Etsy. Remember, I have recently posted, I'm going to show you again, I have recently posted another uh, painting for sale on Etsy, so ready, set, Etsy. So I have now an original painting for sale, original signed painting. Uh, this is the only painting available for sale of mine at the moment. I will be selling art prints at some point in the future, but not quite yet. So yes, even this kitty uh, will be hopefully finding itself a, a new home. Maybe with one of you. I don't know. Just know that each one of my paintings are very, I want to say they're very rare because I dispose of a lot of my paintings. In fact, I think I only have about, I don't know, like 10 or 15 paintings left. I've disposed of the rest. The ones that don't, I will not sell, I dispose of. Alrighty, so Marty, or portrait of Bob Ross. Yeah, that would be fun, except, you know, copyright. I'd have to see if there's a way to get around copyright for Bob Ross. Uh, right. Hey, Roxanne, uh, what about a bull, bullfighter or a flamingo dancer? That would be complicated, but we could look into that. That's interesting. That was my leg that just cracked. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, J.K. Shell, uh, a vase of roses lit underneath by a similar color candle. A vase of roses, roses lit underneath by a similar color. Oh, okay. So the roses would be up here and then the candle. Oh, very creative, J.K. Shell. It's time for some H2O. This is just water. Gotta uh, hydrate, man. Stay hydrated. All right, so Morph Morpher coming up. Impressionistic flamingo dancer. There we go, Steven. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So the flamingo dancer is a good idea, everyone. Uh, but please keep sending ideas. Kitty said, my tail needs some fur. So I'm going to give Kitty some fur on the tail. Brush stroke per brush stroke. We'll get the effect of fur. 
Nice and simple. Carrying it all the way down towards the bottom. But making sure I'm making sure not to replicate anything. See it's a little bit too the this shadow is a little bit too obvious, so I'm gonna have to soften it slightly. And perhaps it would be a little further down here, then it would get softer. Hey Troy, good morning. Oh, don't no worry, you're not late. Don't worry, we'll still be here for some, uh, I'd say like another 30 or 45 minutes, we'll still be here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we definitely had some troubles with the, the muzzle and some of the shapes, but now we're getting into the specifics, the fun stuff. We're getting into the fur. Somebody asked me how do I paint fur? Because we're getting to that. Hector, oh, I'm glad you like the soft fur. Do you remember earlier um, I put that random, not random, but I put that uh, warmer tone in between this one and this one? So sometimes you want to premeditate your edges. So I put that tone in, looks like I'm getting some lagging on my stream. Uh oh. So I put some, I put a shape in between here and here for the purpose of blending into it, like as you're seeing there. And creating an effect of uh, softness and now we're gonna paint in thinner color uh, for more of the fur even more fur that you than you see in the photo reference we're gonna go beyond the photo reference This is the ultra secret layering technique. Ultra secret. But the secret's only revealed if somebody asked me what's the secret. Alrighty, Steven. What's the secret? Oh, right. So, fun fact. Um, when you're using medium, in particular, this goes to fast drying medium. So, this one, Venetian medium, which is a fast drying medium uh, made by Rublev. You can also do this with liquid, or you can also do this with um, uh, you can also do this with Neo Megilp. 
So if you have a fast drawing medium, do you remember when I started to first put in those large brush strokes for the big shapes of the fur? Well, what I did was I introduced medium and it's been what, about 30, 40 minutes since that? And it started to tack up. Tack up, you say, what does that mean? It means that it started to solidify, get kind of difficult for the brush to move. So that was my key to add more medium and a more transparent mixture of color. So I, uh, I went it back, blah, 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 blah. I went back into the lake red and flake white with more medium. So essentially I waited till the paint felt tacky to start putting in what I'm putting in now. So that's the secret. You have to wait and feel out when the painting starts to get tacky to go and put even more subtle uh, little elements of fur like we're doing here. And it almost feels like you're painting wet over dry. That's the secret. You have to be able to gauge the feeling of the paint in order to do that. And that is my first application of large brush strokes of fur was done with quick drying medium. So as it started to tack up, I started to hit it again with smaller brush strokes for smaller details as you're seeing here of the fur. Everyone follow? Everyone with me? It's ultra secret. See? It's layering almost like wet on dry. And now the next thing I'll do is get a fan brush and just kind of lightly push the hairs out. And that is just to soften, not to create effects of fur, but just to soften. And I'm going to soften now wherever needed. Hey, Steven. Oh, he already knew. <laughs> okay, well, I hope that helped somebody. And right now the fan brush is just helping me soften. Hey Marty. Oh thanks. Um, you know we're almost there. Uh, almost there with the kitty but a lot more fur. And kitty says that kitty is going to want to find a new home at some point. So kitty will be, the painting will be uh, for sale in the foreseeable future. As, along with all of my uh, paintings that I'm going to do for these uh, virtual painting sessions. Kitty will be completely varnished, signed. We're going to sign it tonight, actually, but I'm going to let it dry over uh, a two-week span before using Gamvar. But this will actually be touch dry in about three days. All right, let's see here. Hector Plasm, is it working with Cobra 2 since it's kind of slow to dry? Uh, this wouldn't, no, no, this wouldn't be possible with Cobra uh, because, again, it's, it's, it wouldn't be tacking up this quickly, so this wouldn't be possible with Cobra. But what you could do with Cobra is paint it piece by piece instead of layering it in like I did. I layered it to skip many steps. If I were doing this piece by piece by piece by piece, it would be possible with Cobra, but it would be a different tactic. But this isn't completely possible with Cobra. It is. Hey, Steven. I used the fan brush you told me to get uh, about two years ago. Oh, wow. This might even, might still be the one because, I mean, Princeton, uh, these brushes last forever. And this is just to push back any overly thick paint and to soften. Now I'm going to blur this even more so it matches up with this. It's just an aesthetic thing, but 
It should be done. Anthony. Oh yeah, definitely feel free to to join the classes and um remember it's again it's ten dollars a month and uh it you can take the classes immediately like when you sign up i'm not one of the um some creators will actually w make you wait a month for the benefit i don't um uh, you know i trust that my students are are dedicated but yeah whenever you feel you're ready would love to have you on my online classes and remember, everyone, you can take the online classes at your own pace. Uh, so, you know, even though I may be on, like, lesson, like, like week number 100 or something, you can still send me images from uh, lesson one, week one. And all of the projects have associated playlists as well that only only students have access to. So you can see the lessons in chronological order for each project. And again, those of you that are wondering what we're currently working on, again, here is an image of project number three. Not complete, of course. It still needs work, but that is the ongoing... Uh, it's about in the middle stages. That's project three for the online classes. So again, I'm just softening here. Just to get it to match with this. And I'm going for like a, a very dull blue. All right, so now I'm going to return to the other side. I just want these to match the same level of softness. Now, if I want more body to the paint, I'll use flake white, which is what I just used. I'm actually going to go back to this color. I'm going to use a T-square just because I want to make sure that the platform or the fake platform that we're painting in matches. i got to be careful not to rest this onto the painting itself. So about here. Oh, <laughs> what's up, hard job <laughs> making an entrance into the stream? Yeah, we're painting a cat. I had a lot of suggestions for a cat, so we're painting a cat. Oh, awesome. Thanks for sending some bark drawings, hard job. Yeah, I can take a look at it, but remember, um, for you know the constructive critiques, that's part of the uh, Patreon that the online classes that I offer. So, um, any suggestions, everyone, for the name of this painting as we're in the upper middle stages? Now, Kitty has been very demanding. This cat has been very demanding of uh, wanting specific edges to be worked out. So 
Whatever name you title it, make sure it's comical and make sure it fits the personality of this kitty. It's a very demanding kitty. And nothing that'll get me flagged on the uh, the YouTube live stream either. All right, now the platforms match up. Let's see here. Hey, Marty, the worst part about painting in oil is cleaning up all the brushes. Yeah, it is. It pretty is. All right, so hey, hard job. Uh, why, hey, don't, uh, how do I, why don't I cancel the sign around the thin blue? This? I'm trying to figure out what your question is. I just want this to be really thin and I want it to match up with here. Hey Steven, Ivy the kitty? Awesome. Hmm. Oh, why don't I close the sign around the thin blue line? Close the sign around the... Well, I usually don't want the edges to meet up. So, for instance, this, I wouldn't want to meet perfectly with the the blue line here. Let's see. Uh... Oh, the photo reference. Oh, it, that's just the way it was in Unsplash. Um, I had to make up the tail. The tail is not in the the photo reference. And the blue, um, I just completely edited the, the rest of this. So I definitely uh, uh, went and used a lot of imagination for this one in particular. Let's see. So Ivy the Kitty from Steven. Any other suggestions for the name of this painting? I usually like something comical. This actually brings the creative side uh, from everyone. Oh, I think you mean his paw. Okay. Thin blue line paw. Let's see. Oh, named the name the kitty Lucy. That's an interesting name. That's my uh my fiance's name. Lucy the cat. Diva T Hall coming in with Diva. Awesome name. Diva is definitely very fitting to this cat. Hey Roxanne, meow meow. Yep. I wonder if any if we're gonna get any mouths. Meow, if that's how you pronounce it. Chairman Meow. Huh? Awesome. Let's let the creativity flow with these names. Troy coming in with Napoleon. Yep. Seems like this kitty could have a Napoleon complex. It's a very demanding kitty. Uh, hard job. So I think it would have been cool if you moved the tail around the other. Oh, oh yeah, I could have done that. But um, I just wanted to go with this kind of serpentine curve juxtaposed to this like triangle for the composition. A well, great suggestion. I got to take that into account, hard job. Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne. I like the name Roxanne. Oh, uh, Stephen, further explanation. Ivy as in Poison Ivy is getting told off by Bat Kitty. <laughs> Go be naughty. Hey, hey, John Quinn. Um, oh, thank you. Well, thanks for tuning in. And again, if this is your first time, let us know. We'll give you a warm welcome to the live streams. Let's see. Uh, Dondo 
justice because you did a kitty. Oh, oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, Heartshot. Hey, Marty, little treasure. Yeah, yeah, the kitty can definitely leave little treasures if it doesn't want to use its litter box. Like my family's cat named Deborah, who never likes to use her litter box. She prefers to go right behind the internet router. Now we're just putting fur for the paws. I must say I really, really enjoy this medium. I think I got to use it to its full potential today, uh, the Venetian medium. Oh, thanks, Stephen. Yeah, I was trying to go with the serpentine curve here. So it, it, it reads like this, the serpentine curve, and then this little trifecta. Um, so I don't know. That's just uh, what I thought of. So I'm going to make the accents a little darker now to make the kitty planted like it. Kitty is really resting on a surface now. Um, let's see. Hey, John Quinn, how would you say it's different from liquid? Um, it doesn't dry as super fast as liquid. Um, we're talking about Venetian medium, and it has a heavier body feel to it. So Venetian medium is powdered leaded glass, a small amount of uh, wax and turpentine. That's what goes into Venetian medium. So uh, the powdered glass is like a Renaissance thing. I believe that Raphael was known for putting um, glass into his uh, paints. So I think that's where that comes from. Um, but it 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 has a much heavier body feel than <laughs> blah blah blah. Excuse me, than liquid. Let me get the tube out. I actually ran out of a tube, so I'm on my. Uh, I guess this would be my fourth tube now. So you ready for some medium ASMR? Uh, this is really really heavy, and this is tiny, right? ASMR, ready, set, heavy. Uh, it's a very heavy um, tube. Uh, very thick, whereas liquid is a little bit light, not quite as intense as Venetian medium by Roblev. Oh, thanks, Harja. Picasso. Oh, there we go. We're getting creative. Mark, uh, Mark Behim. Picasso. I get it. I get it. Picasso. That's a good name. Clever. Let's see here. Hey, John Quinn. Nice, thank you for the info. I just started using Rublev. Oh, really? Awesome. Then you're definitely going to like um, Venetian Medium. I also have Oleo Res Gel, um, but I only use that to pre-mix into the paints. Um, so Rublev makes another really nice medium that I use. Um, not frequently, but I use. Uh, it's not really zooming in, obviously, but it's called Oleo Res Gel. 
And um, it's a fast dryer, so if you want the paint to dry even faster, you just mix some of it into the paint. Oh, thanks, Harjot. Um, hey, Marty, from my experience, paintings look always look better in reality than on photo slash TV screen. Yours looks great on TV. Oh, thank you. Well, if anyone is interested, again, um, all of these paintings will be for sale. The um, the virtual painting session. I think I moved my ease, my setup. Oops. All of these will be for sale. Uh, for I just finally put my first painting for sale. So if anyone is interested, again, I'll show you. I have one painting for sale right now, but just one. So this one, 8 by 10 inch original signed oil painting by me, varnished and ready to go. So again, just check out uh, Etsy and type my name and you will find it there. But all of these will be updated onto there as, as well. Hey, Marvat. Um, Sim Simba is my Simba may be like my kitten's name. Oh, nice kitten named Simba. We uh, our family has two cats, one named Deborah, and the other one uh, a name that I can't really say on YouTube, but also known as Midnight. Hey Hector, Lord Kitty's watching his unworthy human servants. <laughs> Lord Kitty watching his, his uh, unworthy human servants. Now that is a title fitting for a cat. <laughs> Lord Kitty waiting for his unworthy human servants. Has anyone ever played that card game? Um, ah, I forgot what it's called. Uh, it's like it's a grown-up card game. I forgot. It reminds me of this card game that I can't quite remember. Never mind. It, it sounds like a card game. Now we're actually going to put some color behind the... Actually, I think I'll just very lightly cover some of the back. Just want a little bit of reflected light back there, but not too much. Hey, Harjot, no worries. Alrighty, I think I missed the name here. Let's see, uh, Stephen, my friend's cat is called Lord Fraser uh, Abercomb Abercombri, ugh, I cannot pronounce Abercombri, and he acts like he's a, a lord of the realm. <laughs> I think that's from a, a TV show. I don't think I will, I've heard of the TV show. Yeah, cats definitely have that kind of attitude. Hey, Mervat, oh, I'm glad you like what I've uh, painted. Uh, thank you for your kind words. And thanks for watching my videos. Thanks, uh, Mervat. I'm glad you've learned so much. Hey, Harjot, Frieza. Now we're talking. Are you talking about Frieza? Are you talking about Lord Frieza, Harjot? <laughs> Fre uh, Frieza, definitely. Uh, but uh, th thank you, uh, Mervat, for uh, watching my videos and for uh, that kind compliment. Oh, you know what? I got one, one, one up on you, uh, hard shot. What about Beerus? <laughs> this could be Beerus, like one of Beerus's form. This could be Beerus's ultimate form. Shout out to anyone that gets that reference. Lord Frieza. 
But what about Beerus, Arjad? Because it makes sense, right? The, you know, the destroyer. This would be Beerus' ultimate form. He would definitely defeat Goku. To anyone wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about a, um, a anime again. <laughs> Let's see, what have I missed? <laughs> Hard job, yeah. Okay, you like the, the, the title. Hey, John Quinn. Oh, thank you. Yep, I do use a modestly expanded Zorn palette. Thank you for noticing that, I do. Hey, Marty, shout out to you. You get the, you get the reference from DBZ. Awesome. Yeah, definitely Lord Beerus. It makes, this makes a lot of sense. Lord Beerus' is ultimate form, where he defeats Goku. Like, again, Beerus defeating Goku in Ultra Instinct. This cat would defeat Goku's Ultra Instinct for sure. For sure. Hey, Dran Lord. Uh, hey, you're watching from Scotland, Scottish Highlands. Awesome. Wow, it's after 1 a.m. over there. Oh, I'm glad that you're enjoying the video. I heard that I'm a good sleeping aid for some reason. Do you think Vegeta is going to be the next destroyer? Hard, uh, most likely. He definitely seems like a destroyer. Hey, Roxanne. <laughs> yeah, Pari. <laughs> oh, Pa. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, Pari. <laughs> nice one, Roxanne. Hey, Troy Roberts. Uh, man, nostalgia, but being a kid in the 90s, waiting for the next DBZ episode. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Cartoon Network. Yeah, always waiting for it to, to come out. I would watch the intro intro and everything through and through. Hey, Mark. Uh, Joanne. I'm in the Scottish Highlands. Oh, awesome. Thanks for watching from Scottish Highlands. Wow. Hey, Steven. Have you noticed when you paint over an old painting as you did today, the paint seems to grab and tack up much faster than on just a panel? Uh, it does, and a lot of times it's because of the layer of oil paint. That's actually why I oil tone my panels most of the time. Hey, Naldia Garcia, I apologize. Um, yeah, it, it looks like uh, when I post the... Um, so I'll show you what happened. So you went to the community section, right? And I posted the link. This, I would ignore this, everyone, in the community section. I don't know why this happens when I post... The photo reference. So if anyone wants this photo reference, the one right here, go to my community section, click on the link, the unsplash link. Not this. I don't know why this is here. I think it did that last time. It did last time. I got to figure that out. But if you click on the unsplash link, uh, I just go to Safari. And there you go. There's the photo reference. Um, so in case you want to draw along with me, that's how you can get this photo reference. So I apologize uh, for the confusion there. But don't worry, we'll do many others, many other uh, live streams, and we still got some time left with this one. And since for some reason I tend I moved really fast in this painting, um, just yeah, let's keep the let's keep the party going, let's keep the chat going. Please keep uh, typing comments and especially suggestions for the name of this cat. Uh, hey Marty, uh, I like how in some of your videos you referred Crash Bandicoot something about simple shape, the face looks like a uh, Aku Aku mask that made. Oh really. Yeah, definitely. I'm probably going to be playing Crash Bandicoot tonight. Uh, I have CTR and I have Crash Bandicoot Warped. And I also like to play Spyro the Dragon. Uh, I like to play like old school uh, PlayStation games. That's my thing.
Now I'm giving more of this pattern that I didn't notice the cat had before. Let's keep it up. Any more names for this kitty? Kitty says kitty wants more of a more depth on the half tones across from the corner of its leg. So we're going to give the kitty more depth, a little more sense of realism. And to get the full extent of realism in Alla Prima, again, highly suggest uh, cl classical training, like what we do on in my online classes. All right. Uh, hey, Troy. Uh, hey, Hardjot, what did I miss? Anyone down for Among Us? I'm a little confused there. Let me see. Troy... Roberts, I have a question. If anyone happens to know uh, human anatomy, does the tear duct side of the eye of the outside of the eye tend to be lower, higher in general, or is there no general rule? The tear duct use, uh, is usually lower. I wish I had a picture of a person here. Um, actually, I do. I may get in trouble for this. I'm not going to do it. Never mind. Um, I'm trying to get one of my old drawings to show you. Oh yeah, does anyone remember this? Uh, I just have this on hand. So does anyone remember the video from this? So you're asking about the tear ducts, right? Um, the tear ducts are actually uh, lower than the nose, than the, uh, the nasal bone. So for instance, this drawing didn't come out too well. So um, hold on a second. I don't mind doing this because this drawing was just a sketch. If this is the nasal bone, the tear ducts are usually right here, a little bit below to answer your question, but very good question. So the tear ducts are actually a little bit below the nasal bone. And this drawing didn't come out so well, so I don't mind drawing over top of it. Hopefully that answers your question. Hey, Mark, uh, do you know Mark Kat Kadar's work? Uh, no, but definitely a name I can look up. I don't know off the top of my head. Let's see. Oh, whiskers. How how could you let me forget whiskers? We were just talking about whiskers, actually. A little bit of medium, a little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and some turpentine. And call it whiskers. Kitty said, where are my whiskers? Does anyone know the function that whiskers serve on cats and dogs? I've always been curious about that. I'm sure they serve a function. We know that nature doesn't really make mistakes that much. Hey Mark, um, uh, he's a American portrait artist, very much inspired by Sargent. Awesome, I gotta look at that. Hey Troy, really appreciate it. I would feel super saiyan if I had a sketch that looked like that, and I and it didn't come out so well. <laughs> well, thank you. Has anyone ever, when you were a kid, did you feel like you could go super saiyan in the classroom and just break through the ceiling? I did. Especially, ironically, in, like, algebra class when I was a kid. I didn't find out I loved math until much later. 
But I remember sitting in algebra class thinking I could turn Super Saiyan and break through the, the ceiling and fly away. If anyone gets the references. Hey Roxanne, they need their whiskers to feel in the night. Oh, well thank you. Fun fact, I didn't know. Hey Hardjot, a well-honed sensory tool that helps a cat see in the dark and steer clear of hungry predators. Well, that makes sense. You know, the dark is behind the kitty, so kitty's going to go in the dark and utilize the whiskers to stay clear from predators and all that kind of dangerous stuff. So that makes perfect sense. Hey, Chunky Chicken, Whiskers, uh, let the animals know if they can fit in something without getting stuck. Oh. Hey, Harja. Oh, you got sent to the principal's office for going Super Saiyan once. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. He threw some desk. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I shouldn't condone the behavior, but I understand. Second grade, wow. I was in middle school when that was on... Um, Cartoon Network. Well, so it, so Stephen yep, so it lets them feel around the dark. So definitely had to put the whiskers in. And now we can actually put in some more fur. Get that furry feeling to the to the fur. It was kind of an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. Now the paint is starting to tack up wonderfully, so it allows me to layer in all of these. Uh, hey, Neldia, kitty name, Yup Yuppie. Oh wow! Oh wow! That 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 brings me back. Um, to anyone that doesn't know, I actually attended Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore for about a semester. I actually lived on campus there and uh, met some of the coolest people ever, and uh, some of them would actually call me Yuppie. Interesting. Let's see here. Hey Marty, I tried painting painting cat in, in gouache. Uh, result was not great. Unfortunately, have you tried gouache? Uh, I haven't really tried gouache, uh, to be honest. Uh, I've tried acrylic, but not gouache. So I apologize for that. But of course, you know, gouache does dry relatively quickly from my understanding. So uh, if anything, with, uh, with faster drying materials, um, I think it's always useful to probably use more of a classical approach. Like with the linear drawing and everything. Because it's not as forgiving as this. Let's see. Hey, Harjot, you should name it uh, You Paw Re. <laughs> you Paw Re. Yeah, that makes sense with the paw. Hey, Steven. Uh, I'm fascinated with Egyptian hairless cats. Oh, actually, that's where Beerus comes from, um, from the uh, anime that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, like Beerus, yeah. That's actually where that comes from. Gouache is a... Uh, let's see. 
the pain because of the drawing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think oil paint is probably, in my opinion, one of the most forgiving because it doesn't dry immediately. So more fur, more fur. Uh, I could put more of the hairs over here, but we're almost there, actually. It's almost ready to sign. It's almost ready to sign, let dry, photograph, varnish, and then put on Etsy in case anybody wants uh, to have this kitty in their permanent collection. But remember the, the sales are first come first serve. Let's see. Hey, Hector. I'm going to sleep. It's almost 2.30 a.m. here. Wow. Well, thank you for watching all the way through 2.30 a.m. Um, well, thank you for joining the stream, Hector. Wow, I didn't even notice what time it was. We've been on here for 3 hours and 29 minutes. So I'm going to start signing the painting because at this point it's uh, definitely complete. It may need a few... Uh, little extra bits of hair or fur on the tail, but I don't think it, I don't think I need to put that much more. Let's see. And I need to unify the floor a little bit. All right, so now I need to go ahead and sign it. Um, let's see here. Hey, Dondo, I can't find the kitty reference link that I. Um, oh, uh, what's what's up? Uh, let's see. I can't. I can't read it. Uh, Skinder, oh, thank you for your comment. Uh, Don Do, so if you look in the community section, um, the community section of the YouTube channel, I'm sorry that I can't really zoom it, but I'm on the community section on my YouTube channel. See, remember where I posted these pictures before? Um, if you go to the community, you click read more on the latest one, and then it'll, it'll give you a link over here. You click the link, open Safari or whichever browser, and it shows up with the photo reference for the cat. Yep, the community page. Um, the community section of the YouTube channel. So uh, this is just a YouTube app, so right, th this is my home. It shows currently live because I'm still live. Um, videos, playlists, community. So it's just on the main YouTube channel. So yep. Uh, then you just click open, and there she is. Hey, Rod uh, Rodrigo. Oh, thank you. Oh, R Rodrigo, well, thank you for um, joining the the uh, YouTube channel and tuning into the live stream. Shout out to you, my friend, Rodrigo. I'm glad that you're... Uh, that you enjoy the painting and remember I will be doing uh, these virtual painting sessions the schedule is not set in stone but usually 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Monday Wednesday Saturday with maybe some days in between or some days I may have to miss but uh, roughly that's the schedule hey uh, old Fred do I make money from my art not really not these days um, I mainly focus on teaching uh, with my online classes, and of course I enjoy... I feel like this is my art, um, connecting painting and video, this technology, uh, in such a way that others may benefit, and of course that is, uh, that's fun. Um, this, I feel like this is my art, but I have one painting for sale, so anyone that wants to purchase the um, pretty much the only painting I have for sale right now, and of course, I'll be putting all of these virtual painting session paintings uh, up for sale on Etsy. I'll update you on that. But currently, here is a painting that is for sale. 
if anyone wants to own an original oil painting of mine, uh, it is signed, it has the date, it's been varnished, it is a oil on canvas, ready to go. So that one is for sale. These will be for sale, um, but just note that um, I am very careful with my paintings. So um, any painting that you get will come with a certificate of authenticity with a signature to match my signature that you're about to see me sign right now. And there are not many of my paintings that exist to this day. I've disposed of uh, many, many paintings. So I only have maybe about 15 or 20 paintings of mine left. Uh, simply to keep the best, um, you know, the best stuff. And I think that this is special because this is the virtual painting session. So even though these won't be very highly finished, I I find that these paintings are very special because of the moments that we all share together. So I feel like these paintings do have value. So now I'm just getting ready to sign. Hey, Doreen. Oh, thank you. Yep, I'm just getting ready to sign. Emmervot whiskers is the measurement tool for cats. Without them, they will get stuck. Oh, well. <laughs> I definitely don't want a cat to get stuck. So I'm going to use like a kind of a middle gray, closer to the bluish to sign. A little bit of turpentine. I think I'm going to sign over here. It just kind of fits with the composition. I'd need a different brush. Okay. Take two. Uh-oh, I'm running out of brushes. Hey, D. Michigan. They also say that during a pandemic, Okay, hold on, give me a second. Um, D. Michigan, they also say that during pandemic or difficult times, it's harder to sell art because people don't have much money. Uh, but doing this video will be good for, okay, yeah. I mean, um, certainly I'm very appreciative of everyone that's watching. All of my online students, again, they are the classes are priced at $10 a month, so uh, hopefully not very expensive for everyone. And um, yeah, I'm glad that everyone's enjoying these live streams. Uh, hey, Ufred, do you stick to painting a particular thing or style? Like, uh, have you ever painted space? Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever painted space, but it's, it's certainly an idea. I'd have to practice it some, somewhat before, but... Um, I usually stick with uh, wildlife, human portraits and figures, uh, and, uh, of course, landscape, though I need to do more. Mainly do portraits, but um, I will explore other ones. Alrighty, let's see. Hey, D. Michigan, um, just stopped by to say uh, hi. This uh, stopped by to say hi. See the community and click like. Thank you, thank you for supporting and leaving a like. It means very much. Uh, means a lot. So let's sign this. And again, I'm very picky with what I put for sale. Here we go. Painting is now signed. Space, the final frontier. Okay, yeah, we can look into some space paintings. I just think that that was the, the best place to sign it. Um, I don't know, it just kind of fits with the composition. 
you know, the serpentine shape, the little trifecta going on here in the background. It just feels like it fits. Now I just want to make sure that all of the edges are covered. I am going to photograph it right after I'm done with this. And then uh, once it's varnished um, using Gamvar, it should be ready. Alrighty, let's see. Oh, thanks, Teresa. I'm, I'm glad you like the way the kitty looks. Hey, Troy. Man, I've tried four block-ins of that Rembrandt sketch, and I think the slight turn and tilt of the head is throwing me off as I keep putting the eyes uh, as if he's looking directly at the viewer. Uh, well, certainly, um, definitely, it can be a challenge um, with the orientation of the eyes with the Rembrandt. But usually, it's not always the where the eye is looking. We can take a look at the cat, but it's usually the structure around the eye that dictates where the eye goes. If you, as you notice, I put everything around the eye first before I put in the um, the iris and the highlight of the eye. So it's usually everything around it, just like we're doing in the online classes. Hey, Nadia. How soon do you varnish? I tend to wait months. I used to wait months, um, but now with Gamvar, um, I, I'm going to just wait till the paintings are touch dry. Um, so touch dry within about two weeks, if I'm using traditional, of course. Um, and then I'll just use Gamvar. I really like Gamvar. Um, before I would wait the full six months with Damar, but who wants to wait six months? Alrighty, so I'll hang out a little bit longer and take any last questions. The painting is now complete. Hey Troy, no worries. No worries Troy, we'll definitely do more of the live streams and don't forget about the um, the online lessons I've got you buddy well thanks uh, thanks Marty I'm glad you liked the stream um, Gamvar I actually have it right here uh, this is Gamvar this is what I'm using it's uh, I use I'm using Gamvar gloss and I I use a brush to apply it Obviously not right now because it would wipe off the painting, but once it's touch dry, I'll use this and that will basically complete the painting and get it ready for sale. Let's see here. Hey, Ro. Oh, no worries. Uh, thank you for joining the stream, Ro. Uh, let me, let me check you. Uh, yeah, no worries, Ro. Um, I followed and enjoyed your demos uh, so much over the last year and a half. Oh, thank you so much. And again, if uh, if, if anyone really likes the, the way that I'm uh, producing these videos and wants to take their learning further, please check out the uh, online classes for $10 a month. Uh, good night, Stephen. Hey, Doreen, where do you purchase Gamvar? I purchased this Gamvar. Uh, from Michael's using the 40% off that they always give you. Uh, I'm not representing any store or anything, but I just went to Michael's like 15 minutes away from my house. Or from the house. Uh, hey, Anthony. Yep, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing your artwork as well. Hey, Alfred. I just got a lot of my inspiration from James. Uh, let's see, Carlton, I painted a, a Xenomorph once, the Bashies from Avatar, I gotta look this one up, and Titanic, uh, not to pat myself on the back, but I thought they looked super realistic, awesome, awesome work, buddy, hey, uh, Leonardo, I, 
Leonardo, I'm sorry, Leonardo Carp. Uh, do you like to take breaks while painting? I usually do. I usually do um, 20 to 30 minutes in, but not with the live streams. Live streams, we just go right through because I don't want to leave the, you know, everything unattended. I mean, I personally wouldn't want to watch a live stream where somebody leaves for like five minutes or something. Hey, Piku Postma, what's up? Hope that you're all enjoying the live stream. Or that you have enjoyed the live stream. So remember, again, anyone interested in the um, online classes, I have links in the description box down below. Um, and remember, uh, here's a little, again, a sneak peek at a work in progress. This is not finished. So this is project three, not finished, of the um, online classes of the Vermeer. And thanks to everyone that's uh, suggesting the Twitch, to use Twitch for um, more streaming as well. I have the software to do it, so I can now set it up. And uh, most likely, um, whenever I do set up a Twitch, I'll do uh, stri strictly a charcoal drawing and keep this for the painting. Alrighty. Let's see. Hey, Nelvia. Just saw the movie and read the book. Awesome. No worries, Nelvia. Uh, we'll definitely do many more. Many, many more. Hey, Ro. Yeah, definitely. Um, please check out the online classes if you really like the teaching. Um, and the online classes, again, they are designed for anyone at any level to join in. And um, you can work at your own pace. And you can send images to me every week by Saturday night, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, again, we have lessons every lessons three days a week. And we've got... Um, and we have a virtual classroom every week. And Dondo, you're going to earn an, uh, a gold medal. The best moderator in the world. Let's see. Uh, hey, Troy. Uh, I'll head to the hyperbolic time chamber. Oh, awesome. I got that reference. I wish I could enter the hyperbolic time chamber and train. I would like to enter the hyperbolic time ch chamber and like do some strength training. That would be awesome. Yep, thanks everyone for all the likes. Everyone that's left a like. We've managed to get 135 likes. Thanks everyone. Uh, oh, Fred, no, I haven't seen that movie. Hey, Marty. Yep, no problem. Ask away. Uh, let's see. I do. I do frame some of my, uh, some of my paintings. But I only have about... Um, about five uh, frames. Yeah, thumbs up for Dondo. Uh, round of applause, Dondo. A wonderful moderator for us. Keeping the chats PG. So, yep. Everyone, thumbs up for Dondo, moderator. Two thumbs up, buddy. Could not have asked for a better moderator. Well, thanks to you, Michigan, for sending a thank you to our mo our moderator. Uh, 
Alrighty, everyone. Yeah, this is a family show. This is a a uh, rated PG show. Anyone can watch. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is the cue then to say uh, good night, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it may be for all of you. Again, remember, if you really enjoy these... Um, these streams, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way they can notify you uh, whenever I do um, start streaming live. Usually at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, with some days in between and some days sometimes missed. But that's usually the schedule. And again, remember the online classes are only $10 a month. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, yep, I still have room for another question. Uh, yes, the community here is awesome, D. Michigan. Uh, Troy, one quick question. Yep, uh, studying skull worthwhile for portrait? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. In my classes, uh, and I have to look for the post, but there is a post that has anatomical landmarks uh, for my online classes. So yep, yep, studying the uh, skeletal structure is very important. Very important for portraiture. Definitely, definitely important. Alrighty, everyone, I really hope that you enjoyed this virtual painting session. Uh, so remember, online class is $10 a month. I'm very appreciative of all of you watching and sending comments and making this awesome, making this really a pleasant and wonderful experience for everyone. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I wish you all the very, very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.